All right. So, <clears throat> is everybody here? Yeah. Yes. We we told this to Calden or Flicker earlier. So before we get going, we want everybody to know that this is probably how you respond to this will absolutely shape the rest of the campaign. So no pressure, okay? Just try to have fun and do whatever your characters would do in the moment. <laughs> have an existential breakdown might be a good start. Good. Excellent. Excellent. That's the spirit. Okay. Welcome back, attractive and well-educated watchers, to a brand new episode of The Frontier. Last time we left off, Olek crashed an airship into the side of Mountain Home during a festival day, killing hundreds. Excellent! So, today, we will be getting back to that with a bit of block text first, and we would like to first and foremost thank Torner, because, uh, you know, some, some roles were made off-camera at some point, talking about, uh, you know, who gets out, for, out of the rubble first, uh, things like that. So, everybody feel free to introduce yourselves. I'm Manasse Skyrider playing Aldous Ronan, the human armor artificer. I am Adam, and I am the guy that's playing Torner Firestrike, the yeah! wildfire druid dwarf. I'm Flicker, and I'm playing Calden, the blade singer. I'm Oleg, I'm the Glorified Shipbreaker. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Own that shit. I am Seth Gautamia. I play a Naro cult here, Druid of Land, requisite group furry, and gonna be pissed off mother. And everybody, <laughs> and, and everybody can can see it right now. If you if you look in the lineup, uh, Trikekis is also here. Mountain Home is basically his baby. He made almost everything to do with Mountain Home. So so that's cool. And then and then Oleg dropped the ship on it, which exploded. Flicker, you were planning to do something similar to destructive. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I didn't do it. Your plan, if you were allowed to 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 enact it, would have resulted in this same situation. Let's be lucky. Olek was stupid. First. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> with that in mind, uh, let's move on. Torner. This is block text time, so get ready to play your part and follow along. <clears throat> <clears throat> All is fire and chaos. All are screams and sobs and cries of pain. A portion of the once great city of Mountain Home burns as the sun sits at its highest point in the sky. Children wander around crying. Parents dig at the rubble of fallen buildings. Well-decorated party-goers and priests stumble through the burning streets and look up to the skies for some sort of help, or perhaps just wonder what all happened. A dog wanders through the piles, sniffing and whimpering and digging half-heartedly at the bits of stone and wood. Confusion racks the people, who had just been celebrating a great day, now literally gone up in flames. It only now occurs to you that those many dwarves earlier were wearing fake beards, some on fire and simply some hanging desperately from the ears of panic festival goers. All of the dwarves of Mountain Home seem to be beardless, hairless even. The civilian populace is beyond inconsolable, screaming and running in terror and confusion in all directions, descending into a terrified and dazed mob. The fireworkers and local militia are clearly doing what they can, but it was all too sudden, too much. A positively ancient dwarven lady nearby chews on maize and spits into an earthenware bowl patiently as the inferno slowly creeps toward her and her humble stall. She sits on elegant woven mats as a younger dwarven male, possibly her grandson, yells at her and urges her to leave for safety. But she shakes her head gently and reaches into a large jug nearby with a wooden ladle and serves him a small bowl of milky fluid from within. Throwing the bowl to the ground, he flees, but she remains. Nearby, Eastern Seas gnomes from the deck are dusting themselves off, having used feather tokens to get to the ground safely and beyond the direct blast zone. The prince wails in the distance, of next to the rubble, crying out, By the gods, what have you done? You've doomed us all! As the smoke and dust begins to clear very slightly and you all begin to pick yourselves up, Torner is the first to rise alongside Picklebeard. 
With a quick thinking mind tempered by the rage of a thousand wildfires, the aged druid moves it with purpose almost as soon as he is able, stomping through the rubble to take hold of Prince Aroha Copperbottom Willemson III, sixteenth prince of the Eastern Seas Empire. The prince briefly struggles, but Torner's heavy-handed blows lay him low and render him helpless before the power of the enraged druid. Still recovering from the shock of it all, the gnome's retainers and crew cannot pull themselves together fast enough to prevent this. While Aldous is still misty stepping out of the rubble, and Inarel is screaming at Olek from her position in the rubble, nowhere near him, and others are just getting their bearings, the angry dwarf drags the prince kicking and screaming to the fore, atop a great pile of debris for all to see, and unto the people, with a voice that somehow overpowers the din of thousands of screaming civilians, and somehow with a sudden grasp of the linguistic drift present in Mountain Home Dwarven, he calls aloud... Brothers, sisters, you've been misled. The gnomes are all but pretenders, false prophets. I've seen and lived the final moments of the great rock rider. The great rock rider comes from the city below. You all come from there. Turner motions to the great cleaving hole in the city where the explosion rent the ground asunder, which reveals the undercity. We are the true representatives of the great rock rider. These pretenders do not reflect his will or what he wanted for his people. This gnome knows not the sacrifice of the great rock rider. Reject the pretenders, brothers and sisters, and regain your glory. Torner's hands blossom with fire that rises into the air to call everyone's attention to him, rendering the, uh, rendering the prince in his hands alight, screaming and writhing, kicking and flailing, until, all too suddenly, he is simply ash in the breeze. And through the flames walks Dathut Alefoot, known to all of you as Old Picklebeard. However, far from how you met him, his eyes are full of resolve, his posture tall and upright, and his chest bare from the recent crash, shirt torn off to reveal a muscular figure built back up in the last month during his recovery from a 200,000 year slumber. Clearly, there has been a spark lit in his soul, his eyes full of determination. Torner continues. This man is a descendant of the hero of old. He is here to guide you on the true path of greatness, to build the great mountain of all its glory, to guide you to... Wait, Torner, wait, Satan. Torner. Can you restart yeah. that whole thing? You're clicking out, out of existence. Oh, God damn it. Okay. This man is a descendant of the hero of old. He is here to guide you on the true path of greatness, to rebuild the great mountain home in all its glory, to guide you to prosperity by regaining what has been lost. The known pretender brought only destruction on you. Your new king will deliver you from this destruction. Hail the new king of mountain home. Hail Dale that. Hail Daleth Alefoot, the successor to Rune Rock Rider. It's Dothit Alefoot, but yeah. <laughs> As Picklebeard, ste I got most of it. as Picklebeard steps forward over the people, they fall to their knees in awe and terror as the statues of bronze in the city, previously just random aged statues around 30 feet tall throughout the city background, begin to move and come to the aid of the people and try to put out the fires. Dathut Alefoot, Picklebeard, remains unintimidated by their motion, staring at the crowd powerfully. He looks upon them and speaks. I come from across the ages to see you now, seeing so much that has changed, and my heart weeps, for you have been led astray by the people of this ship, and now they turn against you even more. Band together, extinguish this fire, and extinguish the darkness in your hearts. Follow me to the top of the mountain, and there we shall call out to all of the people. I, Dathut Alefoot, true scion of Rune Rock Rider, shall bring this city to glory and triumph. I, Dathut Alefoot, preserved for thousands of years in the brine, shall rekindle Rune Rock Rider's great society under the mountain, and we will, be get, we will progress into a new age, a new legacy of mountain home. People in the crowd gather together quickly as Picklebeard brings their attention to him, thousands of them coming to his terrifying but awesome scene. Odd eyes and hopeful hearts in the catastrophe. A hero. Torner, you get precedent over as Picklebeard's champion, 
But, at this point, everybody has dug themselves out of the uh, rubble and may do as they please. There are about 8,000 peasant levies. 8,000 people here who are now clamoring for your commands. Uh, Albus, after taking in everything, after taking in everything, bewildered as he is, takes... The current emergency takes precedent, and so he, alongside MD5, uh, begin moving as quickly as possible to put out as many fires as possible, restoring wounds to the wounded and the like along the way. All right. Giving wounds to the wounded? Restoring. <laughs> You're right, that would be giving wounds to the wounded, yeah. <laughs> restoring, uh, you, restoring wounds to the wounded is what uh, I mean. <laughs> You, you know what I mean. Start, stop the breathing. Start the bleeding. Open the wound. <laughs> uh, blood curing blood the blood? wounds. <laughs> curing wounds. Ah. Uh, um. <coughs> you know what? I think Storm. I'm storming. Uh, oh, fly. Also, Calden and Torner. We. Uh, are sending you two a personal message each as you notice this thing in the background. Oh, jeez. Oh, yes! Watch oh, neither yes! Of them any of us. Uh, okay. Yep. You are free to do with that information whatever you want. Can I pick that up real quick? You absolutely can. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, do I have time to look it over, give it a once over? You absolutely can. I gotta AFK just a second. You, uh, Torner, you have seen one of these things before in the hands of Pao Yu. And only in the hands of Pao Yu. What? Oh, shit. Um, oh, boy. So, Torner got to it first. I'm back. Can I see what it is? Welcome later? back. Welcome back. Uh, you do see what it is. Uh, are you... Should we Any... do it in DM, or... Actually, um, no, it's good. It's good. You see what it is. Do I Do I have uh, any other information that Torner doesn't about it, or no? Uh, you've seen one. Oh, yes, actually, you would. You would. You know that it is a royal license. It is a a oh. small a small golden card. I mean, wouldn't they have seen an Arl show hers? Anarl does not have a royal license. She has a noble license, of which, oh, okay, of which right. there are many different varieties from all manner of nations who consider themselves to be aristocratic in nature. Royal licenses okay. are an entirely more potent artifact. Uh, okay, no, that makes sense. Torner, how are you uh, holding it? Uh, I kind of fell out of the, out of the ashes. No, no, like how how are you holding it? Like, uh, pick it just, up. It's a little card. I just grabbed it by the edge just to get it off the ground and kind of holding it by the edge. I'm, right. it I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of push his hand to his chest and tell him to hide that. It's gonna disappear into the bag of holding. <laughs> so you're gonna hide it in the bag of holding. That's the idea. Yeah. Nice. Anyway. Alright. So, Torner, you are technically the commander of this army, but you are all a party. We will give you... Uh... Oh, God. Yeah, right? Awesome, uh, isn't it? Yeah. We will uh, give you a general list of your forces. You have ten Stone Age warrior units, four battle mages, as every member of the party that has awesome magic is a battle mage. You have two units of bowmen... And you have one emergency kill command, which eliminates five from your overall enemy enemy forces. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I may have blanked for a minute there. What are we fighting again? If you <laughs> end up, these are your forces. If you end oh, up fighting end up anybody. Fighting. Okay, cool, cool. Yes. If you end up fighting any enemy forces, these are the forces you have at your disposal. Okay. I'm open to suggestions, guys. Uh, I, what I is the fire? Know. I was going to say, yeah, yeah what, An- 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 going to follow Analdus' tracks, and, you know, she's going to, you know, uncork her, you know, decanter, and just start geysering the fires. But, um, so, I wanted, I was saying this before you started talking about the golden fire. I'm going to start, start casting, uh, Spare the Dying on, uh, people that are laying on, on the ground. Is Spare Hopefully the Dying we- a cantrip? It is. Nice! Very yeah. nice! Okay! It's, so, she's able to stabilize one person every six seconds. Good. Good. That's that's nice. That's that's not bad at all. Good for, good mm-hmm. for you. Some good and proper good Samaritan behavior, huh? Mm-hmm. Alright. Anybody else have Magic. any ideas? So, uh, I'm going to use Create or destroy water. Uh, I can use it a few times before I have to stop. I've got four slots for that. Okay. So that is four uses uh, or one big one. Use four uses. Four uses. So the thir- four 30 foot cubes that extinguish flames. Reasonable. All right. Uh, I... Yep. Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Okay. Go ahead, Kalin, you are talking first. Uh, okay. So, I can use my decanter and... What did you say that took? Was it bonus action, Shai? To, yes. uh, dive in? Yeah? No, oh, well, it's, right. an action, it's an action to uncork it and give the command word, as we recall. But it's a bonus action to, like, reorient it around and... Keep all it going right. and all that good stuff. Yeah. So that means on the first turn it's going to be the action done, corking and whatnot. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about turns quite yet. Would also, I be, hang on, also, would I be able to uh, control flames in the same sort of turn as I use the decanter? Control uh, flames is an action, that's why I'm. Just do that F. You, you can do, you know, start the spray, and then start doing control flames a little bit after. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I suppose so. You, can right, so you don't have to worry about turns right now. Again, control yeah, flame is good. Combat. It specifically involves extinguishing. All right, all right. Okay, oh, that's, that's reasonable. Uh, it is important to remember, uh, to let everybody know, just mechanically speaking, the uh, uh, decanter of endless water reduces uh, approximately 300 gallons per minute. Uh, okay. Which is which is approximately 50 gallons per minute more than an industrial fireman's hose for a large-scale industrial fire. Oh, so we'll have an easy time putting this fire out. One moment. Moon girl, come on! Moon girl, come on! I mean, to be fair, for firemen, I don't think putting out fires is particularly easy. True. One moment. Okay. But we have we have two of that scale of activity. So And on the on the upside, we don't need to drag around the hose. Right. Yeah, that's I'm true. really regretting I'm really regretting not preparing pyrotechnics. Why I don't prepare pyrotechnics in a party that likes to start fires, honestly, <laughs> my character is so much smarter than I am. I, I, I feel I have insulted Aldous. <laughs> I have the ability to swap out cantrips and I still have control of flames. Nice. Okay, sorry, we're back. We had to do a little doggo things right there. So uh yes, you will you will then be dedicating the entire force over the next hour or two to extinguishing the flames. I was, I was, yeah. I was gonna say, wasn't Seth gonna say something? Yes, he said, say a thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't want to disrupt anyone. Sorry about um, that. Go ahead. Ola could probably um, go around and, and dig the dwarves out of the rubble and see if he can hear anyone. The gnomes? Oh, no, yeah, the dwarves. Sorry. No, no. no dwarves. There are dwarves. Okay. We want to remind think, you that there is a Olek nice little old be... lady who might be burned down. Are you going to spend any special attention on her? Oh, yeah, I forgot wouldn't about they, that. Wouldn't the they have tried to uh, distinguish the flames? But yeah. she's a little chicha lady at a stall. <laughs> How big the stall? Oh, 15 by 10. She's also got bigger balls than anybody here. You know, what with her <laughs> facing down the inferno and being like, Psh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Ah, cat, I swear. I have a, deca a decanter too. I uh, have. Oleg has a decanter too. He could just go over and, you know, help out there. Okay. Okay. Oh, how many people have decanters of Ender's water in this party? Two or three? I think three. Three, yeah. Wow, okay, you might actually be able to make pretty quick work of this. So, uh, Torner. Torner, with what's advantage. The, what's, the crew, what's the crew doing? Oh, the ship that just crashed. They're, they're freaking out. They're scattering. They're gone. They, they tried <laughs> to dip into the woodwork. Yeah. Okay. You burned that, their king to ashes in front of them, and they're like, nope, fuck that. I'm out. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, so Torner, as you are, as the the force, we believe the consensus is is going to be dedicated to extinguishing the fires first and foremost. Extinguishing fires, saving old ladies, that kind of stuff. The the proper fireman stuff. Good for you. Uh, as you're doing that, we would be inclined to say. Roll a wisdom save for how to properly direct your people. Oh, wisdom save. Well, yes. We haven't had those fail constantly in the past. All right, <laughs> RN Jesus, let's see what you've got. Here's a question. Hmm. Can I flash a genius this, or am I s s nowhere near him? We're going to say yes. Okay. Uh, is this going to be normal roll or you? What? You advantage. have advantage for advantage. various factors Good. in the background. We won't care to bog down the details with. All right, here we go. Two teams. <laughs> I mean, two nice teams, something right. So, like twenty-four. Yeah, with the flash of genius, it's twenty-four. All yeah, right. I'll do that. I'll just, just takes... like, okay, listen, Torner, I know you've been growing up, I, I know you grew up in the woods, but listen, when you're commanding a dwarven, he's just going on and on. <laughs> so, so it takes about two hours to get the force, to get all of the fires extinguished. Chicha Lady is safe, people are cheering, the lady opens up large jars and starts handing out little bowls of milky fluid to everybody. It's alcoholic, uh, just, you know... <laughs> Everybody's very happy for well, that. Hell, no wonder she was chill. No wonder she was chill as fuck. Now she, she continues. Off her ass and just didn't she, care. <laughs> she continues. She continues to chew on some maize, and she's not eating it. She every once in a while she takes it out of her mouth and puts it in a bowl and sticks some more maize kernels in her mouth and chews on them for a while and sticks them in a bowl. Everybody, anybody who has any brewery kit is entitled to uh, roll for that if they so desire. Oh, you bet your ass I do. Oh, well, there you go. I, I have I have herbalism. Wait, I don't have the proficiency, but I have the item. It's in my bag of holding. Uh, we're talking proficiencies here. Does anybody have a brewery kit or any vintner yeah, stuff or I anything brewer, like that? I got brewers. I got brewers supplies. Brewers supplies. All right, roll your brewer supplies intelligence. I'm not flash geniusing that one. What's the roll? And as a dwarf, I have advantage. <laughs> uh, no, the dwarf gives you the proficiency. You know this. Uh, you know this stuff that she's given you. It's really good, really good. Like, like right, definitely cool. some of the better stuff that you've you've had in your time. You don't know what it is, and you've never had anything like it before. But my God, is it? It's it's truly delicious. Whatever she's making. 
Well, are we talking like Rat Burger and Demolition Man kind of deal? <laughs> no, no, we don't think so. No, 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 we we don't believe so. No, it's it's just this stuff is really good. This alcohol is really good. Uh, so yeah, no, it's it's all it's all gravy. So uh, the the people the people have banded together underneath you at this moment to uh, extinguish the fires. And to chase away or kill the gnomes that were were around, and now they wait on your demand. What would you like to do with all of these eight thousand dwarves or whatever? As the fires go out, by the way, the statues go back to their old pedestals and places, some of which are thirty feet tall. Mm. Well, I guess the first thing to do would be to uh, show them their history in the massive city down below. You want to lead them into the Undercity? I mean, guys, what do you think? I'm open to suggestions here. I'm not really a people person. This I'll, just, is a, I'll, yeah, I'll just pull this corner. I'll just pull this corner aside going, I don't know what the hell is happening, but good job on the quick thinking. Yeah, yeah, that just came out of nowhere. That that was that was. I don't I don't know if I would call that inspired, but yeah. Aldous is kind of glaring at Olek fucking daggers right now, and then looks back at Porter. <laughs> we are going to deal with this later. For now, my goal was until glaring back at Olek. That happened <laughs> to show them their history. So I think it would be a great idea to bring them into the city. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, alright, uh... Okay, yeah, while they're busy with, with that, Oleg is gonna help the people rebuild their houses. Cause, quite frankly, it doesn't matter how much they like the city, they still have to sleep somewhere. True. How is Oleg gonna do that? What is Oleg doing again? Helping Oleg? them rebuild rebuilding. their huts. Well, they're not really rebuilding anything right now. They're... <laughs> They're following the Torner's orders, and they're in in kind of a, a bit of a mob format right now, if you know what we're saying. Yeah, well, they can be mobs, you know. Oleg can help out while they're busy. He knows it already. Oh, he man. didn't pay attention before. Well, uh, you know, you can do what you can try whatever. The party is entitled to try whatever also in response. Mm -hmm. All right, well... Hmm. Well, I guess, I guess is... Okay, I, I, I guess now would be a good time for what I had talked about earlier, yes? I mean, What did you talk about specifically? Right, yeah, I mean, probably... We can't, we can't do that in front of them. True, true. You can't, that you can't, would, that yeah. would just make everything worse, so now is not the time. Alright, yeah, so, you know, we get, we get the people situated, then, you know... Then, then, we'll, then we'll have a talk with Oleg. <laughs> so Sounds like we're all uh, doing shit. All right, what I am I am so uncomfortable as Torner. Torner's just kind of pulling shit out of his ass, and he's amazed that it's worked so far. As you, as you, so you're going to lead them into the uh, Undercity, then, yeah, yeah. Okay, you. Uh, must roll a wisdom save not with advantage. People are not necessarily okay with this. Okay. Let's uh ooh, let's try this again. Let's see what happens. Not bad. Wait, not bad. wait, wait. Hold on. I think I'll use my last flash of genius on this one. Okay. Okay. That's another plus five. I'll just be the advisor. So, Honestly. so as as the dwarves lead all the other dwarves into the into land, the the people are uncertain, and as they enter the darkness, they cannot see, and they are confused. The they do not while you are leading them into darkness. 
Aldous turns on his biology. radiant weapon to lead the way. My gods. God damn you, <laughs> evolutionary biology. <laughs> 200,000 years will do it to you! What can we say? <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Lose it's that... It's a 60-foot radius total for what that's worth, which is only All some right. of the people here. And we've, we've got our, you know, our ever-bright lanterns to do another 120 feet. And oh, I've you, got one of those too, yeah. And as you light up your lanterns at the front, they too light up their own. Carrying torches made of rubble in their own clothes, wandering in exodus into the black, inky depths of the mountain. It goes on for hours as you lead them in their many thousands into the depths, and until you finally reach the now almost entirely, uh, uh, almost entirely deconstructed palace sector at the very top of the Undercity. There, in front of you, in front of the thousands, is the viewing cube where you saw Rune Rock Rider's last memories. Although if you are intending to show them the viewing cube and Rune Rock Rider's last memories, it will take days for all of them to see it. And, they seem uh, to be the leaders of the little of the community, you know, the, the higher ups the, between us and the, the the regular everyday people. Who are the, who are the leaders of their community? The 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 people they yeah. listen to. That old lady uh, probably. Well, the old lady is certainly one of them, although she was... Roll a persuasion. Roll a persuasion to get her to actually leave her stall when you go down. <laughs> oh. uh, can, uh, uh, can I guidance this one? <laughs> you may. You, you, you absolutely may. No, absolutely. Okay, you get an extra three to that. Try, trying to convince an old lady who wouldn't leave her stall for fire to leave to see a rock. Fifteen. Fifteen? Mm. Okay. But only if you help me carry my things, she says. Oh, yeah, yeah, she says. Yeah. So, so... Aldous, Aldous will carry her things, putting whatever he needs to into her bag, into his bag of holding. Her things is basically her entire cart. So you'll, you'll have to drag that down along the the thing, at which point, Turner, you have a land vehicle's proficiency, don't you? I do, I think. Roll for that. As you will, re you will require somebody to help, you know, pulling that cart along oh, and team straight the, What's the modifier? We're gonna say uh, whatever animal handling is. So, wisdom? Wisdom. Wisdom. Yep. The donkeys of the mountain are uncertain about going into the caves. But you're able to... No, Chewy. You don't chew our shoes. Sorry, we looked over and our dog was gnawing on our main sandal and we're just like, no. <laughs> uh, so... But your shoes are tasty. They I are they are cheesy and tasty and farmy and she does love it, but we gotta be, we gotta break her of that. Along with breaking her of eating eggs, because she needs to eventually be a guard dog. <laughs> um yeah. So so fortunately you press them into the tunnel and along the narrow passage into the great city, and there Chicha Lady, of course, offers everybody a nice uh, bowl of chicha, as as much as she can at least, and continues chewing her stuff as she's standing. You want Chicha Lady to go into the viewing room along with several other people that are leaders? Mm -hmm. Well, she'll do it. Sure, why not? Just make sure that her card isn't too far away. Everybody seems to love her, by the way. Everybody seems to know her. Uh, there's uh, there's a, a local um, you know, store owner and uh, a, a, a few... Uh, there's the local school teacher... He's, he's like the big head school teacher, so people trust him because he, he mm -hmm. raises the children. Uh, apparently here they do have a compulsory education system, which, mm -hmm. is, ra which is nigh unheard of in the, front, in the world of the frontier. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they're there. You can roll a persuasion again. Anybody can roll this persuasion, by the way, if they want to. This is to get 
them to walk into the viewing chamber. I was saying, Arl could go. Well, yeah, and Arl's willing to go in with them if they have trust issues with getting in there. Uh, Aldous, Aldous has advantage on persuasion to interact with dwarves, so he'll he could certainly try. Okay? Sounds reasonable. What does everybody think? Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah, a little work. Alright, plus zero, here we go. Oh boy. Thirteen. <laughs> you don't have any more Flash of Genius, do you? No, although in theory I could, if I'm doing this, guidancing that one, because it would be premeditated if you would allow that. Didn't call it first, sorry buddy. I. That's totally fine, I should have asked for it. Well, Chicha Lady will go in, and you get a school teacher, although not the head school teacher, to go in, and you get some shopkeepers to go in with you. <laughs> we get the history teacher. And then, of course, you all go through the horrifying destruction of Mountain Home yet again, and Chicha Lady rolls, teachers roll, shopkeepers roll. Hey, nobody loses their mind. Okay, that's the first good one, right? Right? Uh, mm. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the local populace is searching around and looking at things. So nobody loses their mind. Chicha Lady is heartened by this. It's, exact it's exactly as you say. Uh, the... The school teacher finds this very difficult to believe, and uh, the shopkeepers also do, because after all, everything has always been this way. But the chicha lady, it's exactly as you say. Exactly as you say, just as you said. Uh, she gives you, she pulls out a, a jar of her specialist chicha and shares it amongst the party specifically and the local leaders that are present and, and a toast to the revival of, of Rune Rock Rider's legacy. It's very good. The people as a whole, the, the whole army or whatever is good. You can actually lead a lot of people into the viewing room. Now that they see that it is safe and you won't be killed if you walk into the viewing room. Uh, so... So, plenty of people, at least all of Chicha Lady's people, will go into the viewing room and see the experience. Again, it will still take days, but you can move them in in groups of ten. I was gonna say, I imagine at the, after a few few people, it's a voluntary thing of, hey, you want to see some crazy shit? <laughs> you want to see some crazy shit? You make it sound like a festival. We're... <laughs> like it's some kind of fair ride, which honestly it is, but... We're leading and, these people to rediscover their history. And you you also you also find out during that time that today today of all days which as you may or may not recall is June 19th or sorry June 29th there today of all days which as you may or may not recall is June 29th is the day of Ru Rune Rock Riders Ascendancy. So, so... Wait, have we had any days pass? I'm asking for the reason of tracking our crafting back home. No, no, it's just the ones that you were traveling. Yeah. Okay, alright. Today I'm is the to day those. of Rune Rock Riders Ascendancy, so it is a holy moment. Many people are very excited, despite all of the death. You hmm, know not what's going good. on above, though. <laughs> we, we should... Probably take at our earliest convenience. Deal with their uh, deal with the bird problem, as it were. What bird problem? <laughs> well, well, they, they the, how well are do they still believe the rock is a holy creature? Because if so, we're going to have to deal with that. Obviously, they believe that the rock is a holy creature. They saw Rune Rock Rider riding it to war in the end times. I was say, if anything, the this, this is... viewing is going to be reinforcing it. Yeah, if anything, this is going to make right. the rocks are even that cooler. Bird die? That bird definitely died, but it was in a fight with a dark god. So you know, these things happen. They they have a different rock now. Yeah, right. Plenty and of other we need rocks. to convince them that this is not a holy creature that they should be killing themselves for. Is the point that I'm driving at? Or at well, the very least, not killing themselves for it. Well, so, deal with that maybe 
after the coup thing that you've started. You know, one, yes. one fire entering the, time. the one culture. Fire the time. I agree. Also, we need to have a stern conversation with Oleg. <laughs> so, so now that you're cycling people through at about ten people per minute. Uh, you uh, are free to... You still have huge amounts of force as the people are searching around. Do you want to move them into the residential sector or something? Yeah, show show them the old homes. Yeah, because as we mentioned, like, the city is untouched. There's there's no food or whatever, but the city is untouched. There's plenty of room I would for say it. I would say it would definitely take them time to adjust, so certainly have a, uh, for lack of a better word, relationship with the outside world as they learn to adjust. They can still live in their homes outside, but, you know. I was going to say, they, they can still live up on the surface and stuff, but now they know they have an option. So, at this point, you have three functional options. You can go to the top of the mountain, to the palace, and uh, do that kind of stuff. You can go further into the city, or you can disperse. You only get this mob for, like, a day, so, you know, use it. Top of the mountain? Huh? What? You, you said something about going to the top of the mountain? Yeah, because that's where the palace is and all that are and stuff. If you want so to name a, yourself king, you probably should go to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Oh, Logically. Or at yeah. least Picklebeard should, yeah, logically say, speaking. Maybe you should bring Picklebeard to the top of the mountain. Well, yeah, that, that's the point. He's he's your uh, he's your puppet king, if you will. Puppet ruler, if you will. <laughs> or alternatively, you could go down deeper in where you know the great forges are. Yeah, does but have wouldn't a it be better to it. first establish the town? I mean, afterwards, the fortress is not like they run away. It's true. Houses don't run away either. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think we should probably go to the top of the mountain and establish Picklebeard as king. Yeah. Get, get, get Picklebeard up there. Anybody, anybody who has history as a trained skill is more than allowed to roll on this. Right. Oh boy, you bet I'm rolling on that one. Okay, do it, yeah. 25. Well, well in RL, <laughs> you know, as a noble, that time is of the essence on these kind of things. Anase, you know from your classically tr uh, classical training and education that if you want Picklebeard's thing to be official, you have to do it now. Because because it is almost certain that anybody who has heard of it is starting to prepare against it. True, true. Then time is of the essence. We should do All that. Right. Seems to be seems to be the best move for the hole that we've dug ourselves in. Torner with we are, we are, Go ahead. I was gonna say we are dwarves. We're good at digging around the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Torner, yeah. Torner, roll. Uh, what were we saying earlier? Your wisdom save with advantage. Woo! Torner, you are able to keep the mob in line while you march up the hill over the next. Only one hour. A feverish pace for 8,000 people. <laughs> Only wow. one hour you're able to get yourselves up the hill into the palace district at the walls, of course. Unlike all of the other walls, the walls of the palace district here appear to mostly be made of wood and the gates are much more rudimentary, as though it were put up long after the fall. E. The gates are closed. The guards are there. And they are fully ready, dressed in full body jaguar and bear and wolf suits. With great 
long swords. No, are they swords? They might be clubs covered in obsidian blades, perhaps, and and woven wicker shields. Wait, wait, I'm confused. Didn't we go to the palace district district for the viewing? No, so we went to the, the old, palace. yeah, we went to the old palace. Now we're mm. going to the new palace. Oh, right. The gotcha. So this is this is the above ground. We went to the underground one. Gotcha. In relevant pictures, we will show a picture of uh, what they kind of look like, and uh, just imagine them as dwarves instead of humans. That uh, that that thing that the dude in the second picture is holding there. Actually, both of them are uh, the sword-looking things that they're carrying. And they're dressed up as as eagles and as jaguars and some bears and stuff like that. Oh, wonderful. Wow. <laughs> yep. They're all over the place. All up in your grill. Well, not all up in your grill. They're all up on top of those walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they look ready for battle. They really do. <laughs> you guys are going to have to convince them not to battle us. Maybe, if you want to, or if you want to battle them, I mean, that's your choice, but they look ready. Like, they got their Jaguar outfits and everything. I, I, Hello, you want to you wanna take this one? Let's see if you can get us in. And RL doesn't speak Mountain Home Dwarven, or possibly even Dwarven. She speaks Dwarven. Oh, okay, well, she doesn't speak dwarven. Mountain Home Dwarven. Aldous is definitely helping with this one. <laughs> As we recall at this point, Calden, Torner, and Anas or an Aldous speak Mountain Home Dwarven, yes? Uh, I don't. Okay, okay, so just Torner and Anase. We could have sworn somebody else had it, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't maybe think I cast Comprehend Languages last session? That's fine, that's fine. Um, so... And it wouldn't matter, over an hour has gone by. Uh, so, uh, either, it's either Torner or... Or Aldis, who's going to have to be stepping up for this. Torner, if you do it, we will give you advantage, as you are the commander of this force. Yeah, Al Aldis is going to be encouraging Torner to continue his bullshit, because it's working, and he okay. hates it. It's working so well. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, Alright, I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell him, hey... Uh, uh, wait, Anase, are you going to use guidance? I am using guidance. Okay, roll for your guidance roll. Just sure for thing. the future. Great. Right. All right. Now, Torner, please do your thing. You step up in front of uh, them, and at, they are at the ready, and you say? We come to speak to your leader. Something is... So, uh, fuck. Uh, basically, we come to speak to your leader. We need to talk to him about uh, about some shit that just happened. Roll a persuasion. <laughs> Would they have heard the explosion? They everybody oh. saw the explosion. Like <laughs> I, I would not be surprised if we got back people, to camp and at how you asked, hey, what was that noise? <laughs> some people on the other side of the mountain felt the explosion. Yep, you do goes. get advantage yep, on it. it was my luck. You get advantage. His plus one is better than my zero. Well, it's... That's a ten. Ten, help at all. ten is better than six. They are at least not immediately hostile to you as they say, we shall tolerate no heresy and no treason. Go back to your homes this instant. Oh, he and wants we, to play it that way. Go oh, back no. to your homes this instant, and we will see that all of you are left unharmed. Do we, um, do we sort of understand their tone? Oh, oh the yeah, tone is clear. Up. You can always understand the tone. <laughs> then it's war. <laughs> oh, oh no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at, who, who just spoke to me, you know? I'm gonna look at the guy that just spoke to me. Captain of the Jaguar Warriors. Them. Captain of the Jaguar Warriors, right up at the front of the gate. All right. Okay, I'm gonna look at him. I'm gonna look uh, in the direction of the explosion that happened. 
believe me, the bodies over there are a clear indication of how this is going to go down. And I want to try to intimidate him into backing the fuck down. Intimidate oh, with no. advantage. It was just intimidate. Intimidate oh, no. away. Oh boy. No advantage. Just regular. Uh, and he says, "We are the holy yeah. guard. We cannot be intimidated by your peasantry. Leave now, and I will be merciful." Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. And and I was gonna put a put a hand put a hand on his shoulder and be like, "Please, can we avoid another disaster?" I'm doing what I can, but he's Aldous, not cooperating. Aldous, this human speaking perfect mountain home dwarven with a glorious beard, full armor, walks to the man and says, We wish not to spill additional blood. However, your What's what's the words I wanna leader? I wanna yeah, your must your current be informed. your way of leadership has caused he, bullshitting. By the way, because <laughs> he knows he knows okay. uh, your leadership your leadership has led to a disaster with these gnomes. He says in a derisive tone. Deception with advantage because they're dwarfs. He is seventeen. Uh, one, one. All right. We only Our wish way. to speak is the point he's getting at. You only wish to speak? Then your commanders will come in if what you say is truly as important as you say. I suppose it is a concern, but the rabble stays outside. We will not be bringing per war into the walls. I mean, perfectly reasonable. I mean, out of character, he's already agreed to bring war into the walls. <laughs> <laughs> that was Torner. Leaders only, leaders only. Let, yeah, let, let, the, people, let the people be spared. I think this is probably our best move, though we do have ways of getting in as well. If the need arises. Uh, I, was I think we should agree to this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Are you leaving Chicha Lady in charge? I mean, she seems to have a handle on things. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. So the, the new king and the heroes go into the gate, and Chicha Lady remains stalwart and faithful with the rest of the troops. You wander into the gates, past the largest statues yet. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I actually have to ask. I actually want to ask a quick question because I didn't really think about this until just now, which is Aldus's people. What is their relationship with the norm? Uh, no, well, the gnomes. Well, the Eastern Seas Empire is ubiquitous. It, if you, the, their their ter water territory extends from the icy bergs in the north all to the the way down to the boiling seas in the south. So it's nearly impossible to go anywhere within the borders of, you know, stable reality without at least knowing about them or hearing about them. Well, let, let me put it like this. Uh, you, we were talking before about the relationship between dwarves and elves. I was curious what the relationship was with uh, Aldous' people, just in general with gnomes. Dwarves and gnomes. Oh, and, dwarves and gnomes are gnomes. cool. Dwarves okay. and gnomes are cool, generally speaking. Okay. Okay, that's that's what I figured. The, the dwarves consider the gnomes the, their successor race because, of course, the dwarves insist that they were the ancient people. Yes, right. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the the dwarves largely consider the gnomes to be their successor race. Another an, another group of ground people. That that's uh, so. That, I wasn't I wasn't sure uh, when I said the derisive tone. I was at the very least referring to these people misleading them. But I when I said that I was like, well, wait a minute, do the dwarves actually hate the gnomes or not? So you walk. Sorry, that's all. 
As you walk into the palace district at the top of the mountain, you find that everything is clad quite gaudily so in gold and silver and gems and all of that. You have literally walked into a literal city of gold. <laughs> and uh, and El surrounding yeah, El surrounding you surrounding you yeah this this is kind of the El Dorado arc if nobody was able to tell <laughs> and so surrounding you are all sorts of well hairless dwarves covered in with wearing fake beards or not very hairy dwarves with weak beards uh, but otherwise people dressed in courtly robes and and. Uh, tattooed bodies with jaguar markings and fancy-looking warriors, Stone Age warriors, and all that good stuff, as you walk toward the palace just beneath the sacrificial altar that is the top cap of the mountain. As you do, <coughs> you are led into the golden gleaming halls, and before you, as you enter a chain a chamber clad in gold and silver, bejeweled with all manner of gemstones, and adorned in the grandest of finery, surrounded by thin but definitely bearded nobles and countless completely depilated priestly types, though many wear fake beards today, you see a boy, by all means, a young dwarf of maybe 25, with a thin, wispy beard that cannot even block the view of his fat neck. Only looking at him briefly, you see the boy is perhaps sickly and infirm, though he looks powerful right now. You cannot tell if it is an act or if he is actually confident. Atop his head, a great and gaudy crown of bronze and black metal, clad in gold, which itself is engraved, and the engravings filled with silvery metal that isn't quite silver. Little gems all over it glow gently as he wears the giant piece of metal atop his head, nearly covering up the entire upper half of his head. A surprisingly tall and thin dwarf stands next to him in obviously priestly robes, his own face clad in a fantastic fake beard that almost looks real. So close does it sit to his face, and so detailed is every strand on it. But upon narrowing your eyes, you definitely see the ear straps. <laughs> what have you done to the king's holy city? Why have you come here spreading heresy and treason? The announcement of some new pretender king he demands, looking all the like to be some dwarven equivalent of some perfumed Jafar-looking motherfucker. <laughs> what do you say? Well, uh... Sure. Anybody, anybody may speak now who is present. Uh, is Alice present? I don't... I don't... All, yeah. this, all of the commanders yeah. were allowed to walk in. Okay. The whole party's Olek, here. Because I think Olek, I'm are you present? Olek, are you present? Is, is Eset present? Yeah, even that is also a good present. Eset, are you present? Can Eset speak? It does not appear so. Oh no! Have we lost an Eset? No. No. Creepy, perfumed, Jafar-looking motherfucker. <laughs> so, I never watched El Dorado, so this is going to be fun for me. Uh, you want to know something funny? We never what? watched El Dorado either! Ooh, El, Dorado is, El Dorado is just this, um... I'm going to go out on the limb and say fake Golden City. No, that... we're talking about the movie, Road to El Dorado. Yeah. We're talking about the real one. Yeah, we Sorry, know all the about the real, 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 real one. <laughs> Well, well, the real one was the Muisca, uh, the Muisca capital city or whatever. But when they found that, they just convinced themselves that there had to be an even bigger city of gold out there. El Dorado is literally just the an entire adventure path made by the wanton greed of regular people. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they found a city of gold. It, it was there. It, it, it was a thing. They even had a king that was always covered in gold powder, and he was considered to be so spiritually holy that he wasn't even allowed to spit on the ground. He spit into gold foil, and then he gave it to a servant who went and burned it in a gold brazier later to make more gold to turn into powder to throw on him and stuff. <laughs> This, and then, and then, when they were done with this gold, they literally just buried it all in this giant river, or, or sorry, this giant lake, this like Lake Muisca or whatever. 
and 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 yeah, and this this lake has been people have attempted to drain it and get all the gold out like a million times since then, and you know what? They can't almost as if it's cursed or something. You know what's even better? The Spanish when looking for it found and threw away tons of platinum. Yeah, yeah, Which hilarious amounts. Because at the time, at the time, platinum was just considered a junk byproduct of the smelting process for silver and gold. Yeah, so it's like they're throwing away probably about as much value today in platinum as they were looking for in gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah, they awful. probably did that. Yeah. All, all because back home, it wasn't worth anything. Yeah, they didn't know about it yet. It wasn't like a, wasn't a thing. Do we still not have an Olek? So. Then, um, we, we may need to move on then, unfortunately. Unless we, we want to wait a couple more minutes. We may need to say that Olek is currently um, rebuilding. We're just going to ping Izeth. I mean, I was paying your general, not relevant. Oh, but... <laughs> uh, whoops. My bad. Alright, we sent Olek a thing. If, if if Oleg pops in, we'll do a quick retcon, but we're 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 gonna keep this one going and say yeah. Aldis, maybe you'll talk. We don't know. Whoever wants to talk, we'll talk. I am so bad at this, it's probably uh, the best so, that I don't. So you said that this is role can? play heavy. This is anyone can, you're all there, this is role play heavy. Do not tell us what you're doing. Tell us say what you're gonna say. Uh, what what was the last the last line the guy said? Something uh, about heresy. What have you done to the king's holy city? Why have you come here spreading heresy and treason? The affirmation of a new pretender king. And on such a holy festival day at that, we bring only truth. The true heresy is your lordship. Oh. Flicker, flicker out here having the balls to say directly what Hender implied. <laughs> right, right. All right, all right. Roll. Just, just give us a flat roll. Just give us a flat, flat roll. roll. All right. Flat d20, baby. <laughs> Two. Oh my god, what does this mean? He, he says, <laughs> he says, How dare you! The highest of treasons! But the boy says, What do you mean? We, the boy is curious. We bring you truth about Rune Rock Rider, about your legacy. Well, he's a god in, in the sky fighting the Dark Ones. With all of the souls and spirit and blood of us down here, of course. And the priest next to him nods his head and goes, Exactly! Don't listen to anything they say! Aldous chimes in, That's not true, and we can prove it. Rune Rock Rider was a, was a dwarf, the same as any of us. He is from the old times, and we have rediscovered the the city below as well as the evidence to prove our claims his battle with the dark ones has already happened well everybody yep. knows that <laughs> the so the fight to ended this day. the fight ended a long time ago people gasp people lurch back in in horror but the boy the boy simply seems curious, and he says, What do you mean? If the, the battle still goes every day in the sky, above all of us. The, the, the great birds come, and they, they take our, our priests and our, our greatest warriors, and they carry them off to fight alongside Rune Rock Rider. Rune Rock Rider did, in fact, ride a rock, but it fell in battle alongside him. All those years ago, How, however many thousands it was, I cannot keep track. Just say all those. Years. Yeah, all those years ago. ago. All those, all those years ago. Yeah. The 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 years in between are sort of irrelevant at this point. It, it, he's You're right. right. <laughs> yeah, he's right. <laughs> I get stuck on details. 
Sorry. Sorry, I get stuck on details. Well, uh, of that, course that is, his rock fun. fell, but we bring his rocks back with the blood of our greatest warriors and the force of their determination, he says with a smile. Aldous is puzzled as to how to continue from here. <laughs> guys, after you guys decide to step in, I've got no ideas. Uh, Inaral, might I recommend saying something about it not being that easy to bring someone back from the dead? <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring, you, you, have bring, a, you have a little bit of experience with that. Yeah. Bring, bringing one back from the dead is not as easy as summoning a bird, unfortunately. What? What do you mean? What could the What could the great rocks be other than runes, celestial servants? Exactly, exactly, my good boy, says his regent, and that is how we all know that you have been paying attention in your lessons, unlike these heretics and strangers and tall folk. <laughs> he, he, when he says tall folk, he literally can only look to Olek. We, oh, no, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, call the... Yeah, I'm going to look, look at the vizier and I'm going to tell him to shut his fucking mouth. Do you say you just say shut your fucking mouth? I'm just gonna look at him and be like, "It being best to be silent and let us speak to the, your ruler. You're not in charge here." How yes. dare you? He says, "I am the crown regent, the high priest of this holy city, freshly ascended to my rank just today." And clearly put in my position by Rune Rock Rider himself to ensure that you do not destroy this holy institution. The priests have look. held the priests have held the monarchy up and it, the forefront of the people for <laughs> thousands of generations. Ah, jeez. Oh, <laughs> Hold on a second, Torner. Hold on a second. Aldous, Man. when he hears that he's been put into this position by Rune Rock Rider himself, queries, how do you know that you've been put in this position? Rune Rock Rider sent one of his personal envoys down to bring the last High Priest into the skies with him, and I am the next. Rune Rock Rider sees all from his lofty position above. Surely he already knew that this would happen. Have you been spoken to? Have you been told this, or did you just assume? I speak with the voice of Rune Rock Rider. Otherwise, he may strike me down this moment. Huh? Huh? I was say, now the old person. I <laughs> challenge. What if I spoke with the voice of Rune Rock Rider? Would he strike me down, and he opens up his arms waiting to be struck? How your could argument you speak with the voice? No, your argument holds no weight. Your argument means nothing. Roll a persuasion check with advantage. Double eight? Are you fucking kidding me? Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> the king says... The king says... I don't know. He is the high priest from a long line of high priests, and he has been working for many decades on his position. And he has raised me well. I do not deny that he has worked hard. I only posit that perhaps the underlying principles are unfounded. But Rune Rider speaks to the priests, not to some bearded armor fi armored figure. The boy Why? says... Why would he speak only to the priests and not his people that he is supposed to be leading? The priests are his people, says the regent angrily. What sort of man do you take me for? I was raised on Mountain Home. I have never stepped foot outside of the glades. How could you know? I've never Out seen your like before with your shining masks and outfits. Remember, they don't have steelwork here. Right. Aldous points to the symbol on his pauldrons. This is the Ronin brand. I am not a dwarf, obviously, but I have been raised by them. 
we come from Das Media out towards wherever it is, out towards that location. <laughs> I've never heard of this place. Nothing worth talking about except for beasts and monsters live outside of the glade. You are outsiders proving this very point. You come with your flying ships and you destroy everything. And then once those destroy everything, the gnomes they call themselves, then suddenly a new group arrives uh, in the wake of destruction to claim that they have a new king who is Rockmire's descendant. Aldous interrupts him. Have you ever stepped foot inside the city below? Oh, of course not! Ah, oh, blasphemy! It is taboo! Nothing lies down in the depths other than monsters and nightmares. Aldous oh. takes out a piece of parchment from his bag of holding and puts a rune on it, which then transforms into an image on the page of the of the box that's in the, in the city below. We have visited the city. Inside the city is a viewing chamber. In this viewing chamber holds the memories of the days of the fight with Rune Rock Rider and the Dark Ones. Rune Rock Rider was not a god. He was a glorious leader, but not a god. And you can see it if you go into the city. Okay, Olek is not with you. Okay. Olek has, at some point, snuck away during the <laughs> excitement. Uh, he, the, the, the Seneschal, the Seneschal says... Goodness gracious, and now, now you expect me to believe that some box in some dark hole in the ground holds the answers to this? Nothing but, nothing but lies and slander. I, I don't ask you to believe it. I ask you to verify it yourself. To come into the most taboo of all locations? You're Why lucky I don't taboo? have your... Interrupt me one more time and I will have your tongue. You're lucky I haven't already. I'm gonna Listen. drop the whole person now. He's done. Okay. Okay. Uh, stop you at this point. Okay. You use hold person, which we will remind is a verbal, somatic, and material thing. So when he does it, Torner literally picks out a straight piece of iron from his thing, which or is uses a spell focus or whatever, and then goes and waves his hands around in the air, and, uh, it is, uh, what's your DC? He has to make a DC 15, and I slam my staff onto the ground, look at him, and cast a spell, and just tell him to shut his mouth and be silent. As, as you interrupt him, of course, and say, shut your mouth and be silent! He... He goes rigid in mid-pose and falls over onto the ground. And but, all of the sudden, yeah, all, running, all of the sudden, up. all of the swords in the room are drawn. And uh, everybody gets a... Wait, one moment. One moment. You notice that there are four statues in the room, by the way, in this giant chamber of gold. And immediately, as soon as he hits the ground, all of the statues raise their spears and shields and point them at you. All of the and guards of jaguar and eagle outfits draw their swords. You're surrounded by them. Right? And everybody. At and the me. whole group. And everybody yeah, I'll just have the group of intruders. I'll hand my staff and I'll, I'll hand my staff off to an arl and step forward. I'm the one that locked him down. You want to, you want somebody? I'm right here. But leave them what? That Why would you do this? He because he wouldn't shut up, and you need to learn what the truth is. He doesn't know what's going on. He's not the one sitting on the throne. You are. You make your decisions. You make. You call the shots. If I'll you do Aldous wants to chime in. Anyone who would keep you from learning is trying to deceive you. 
Hmm. Roll a persuasion with advantage. It was a nice shot at the end there, Aldous. We liked it. That gets the persuasion b- uh, advantage. Go ahead. All right. Torner, Torner rolls it. Oh, Torner sorry, is rolling this. Oh, gotcha. Oh, bad. Persuasion with advantage. Torner? Uh, I think he's working on it. Pick net. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, was he was bubbling out earlier. I'm sure everybody heard. So. Yeah. There it is. Ugh. Damn it. I can't leave my palace in a time of emergency. I'm required to use the crown, and you are committing dangerous acts in my court. How am I supposed to be <laughs> safe? <laughs> then send a retainer. I will leave. I hand my staff off to Inaro. Yeah, uh, you did that I'm already. Standing right in front of him. I have no weapons on me. You can bring as many guards as you want. Me, you, and your guards alone will walk down to that chamber, and I will show you what the truth is. Just okay. you and okay. my guards? Just me. Have you... Have you uh, dropped your concentration? I'm on the still whole holding... I'm still, I'm still maintaining hold person. Alright, one moment. He gets... It's DC 15? Yeah, he beat it. He, he can get up now, and I'm still standing there. And so, I'll tie him. And do it. So, as, as the boy thinks, the Seneschal gets up, and he says, Absurd! You're trying to kill the, crowd, or the king! Look at everybody! Take them under weapons right away! Kill them all! And the boy lifts his hand. And he says, if it is just with you, and I am to bring all of my royal guard, and the my mentor, and the, you know, the high priest, and my captain of the Jaguar warriors, who will serve with me the entire time, and walk into this chamber with me for my defense, I shall journey into these Forbidden depths with you. For the good of my people. Keep an eye on my staff, and I'll be back. Sure thing. And, and the, gra- the high priest says, No! No, you fool! You cannot allow it! I won't allow it! And he slaps the boy down. <gasps> and before anybody can do anything at all, He grabs from the boy's head, and he says, You are not... He grabs from the crown from the boy's head, and he says, You are not able to take on your role. You are an imbecile. Now I shall do what needs to be done. And he sits on the throne, and he puts the crown on his head. How far away am I from him? You are 200 feet away from him. As the chamber is vast, and you have been kept at the opposite end of the chamber. And he cries out, he cries out, Soldiers, take them now! Great defenders of the city, destroy all who oppose me! Aldous, then, is going to chime in because of his fourth choice of words. I want to say, he's going to hurt the king! Because Every well, no, he he already has her. He, 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 he slapped he's that boy down child. and took sorry, the crown. Sorry, he's going to kill the king. One, I want to play on his choice of mm. words. So, uh, everybody, roll initiative. Please remember to click your tokens, fellas. Since I'm not that, I'm not supposed to participate, right? Yep. No, you're not. So I'm we're not. going to get to what the fuck is Olek doing? I'm happy to have you back. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I didn't, uh, you know, since you guys were all busy by yourself, I didn't notice that I was supposed to, like, chime in and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, uh, Oleg was outside helping out and then uh, vanishing. <laughs> They're just disappearing into the, into the noonday sun, you know? That's just going to make Aldous even more angry, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, like, crashes ship, kills hundreds of innocents, gets away with it immediately. <laughs> Leaves. <laughs> Fuck this, I'm out. I don't, I don't have to be here. I mean, he stayed around and helped with the fires and helped save people. Yeah, he also tried to rebuild while you guys were busy. It's just that Roll. eventually he decided that he should probably go. True. Roll 20 for statues. Already waiting on the name. And apparently statues. I don't remember how to spell statues. <laughs> Double Roll. checking. Okay, my brain, my brain works. Okay, I'm good. Roll 9 for Royal Guard. <clears throat> this is an interesting initiative. Uh, Dex tiebreaker, or do you just want to let it go below before the owl? Or before the owl, or after the owl, yeah. Roll yeah, right. 11 for Jaguar Warrior Captain. Making it a little shorter so it fits on the damn... On the damn thing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. D100. A hundred on the D100. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be fun. Uh, oh, I am I'm I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. Uh, um. our, ne our next characters are going to discover the ruins of uh, what used to be our our current home. <laughs> this looks like a good place to set up, but what the fuck happened here? Well, there's just Pao Yu, and she's picked everything back up and kept going. Right? She doesn't know what happened to you, fuckers. <laughs> we we oh. went off one day and never came back. Never, and they just, you know, I waved and they just, you know, they never, yeah. Shit luck, luck right? Uh, so, uh, Inaro, it is your turn as mm. the chaos begins and the statues begin orienting on the party. They are, each and every one of them, 30 feet tall, and each of them has three spears that are approximately 30 feet tall. All this? Mm. Did you happen to prepare Shatter? There are four of them, by the way. Mm. They mm -hmm. are... They are each of them about 60 feet away from the party. I think we lost... Uh, uh, joy. Hmm? He, he just... Went off of roll 20 and he's not speaking. That's okay. Yeah, He'll him. come back. It's not his turn yet. It's all good. <sighs> good lord. And RL, shit is actually hitting the, the proverbial fan. Like, yes, it is. And I'm trying to figure out what to do. The party is functionally surrounded by people in all mm -hmm. directions, which means yep, you're at the goes. luckiest, you're at the luckiest stage in, 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 that any fighting force has ever had in history. You have the benefit of being able to shoot in any direction and probably hit somebody. Mm hmm So, uh, in all, yeah, I'm not sure how many spell slots you've used. Not any, actually. Oh, good. Um, you could do call lightning and then fly up. Because I believe I believe we're outside. Or you are in. You are in uh, the throne room. Yeah, you're in the throne room. So not a lot of room of movement. Actually, I don't even think I'd be able to do call lightning because that requires at least 100 feet above me. Yeah. So you could fly. The room is big. It's not 100 feet big. Yeah. 100 feet tall big. Yeah. yeah. Fly flying might not do me much good considering, you know, we're facing stat 60 foot statues with 30 foot spears. 30 foot statues with 30 foot spears. Oh. Still, even then, they're, they're going to reach me. Uh, jeez, why did I have to get first initiative? Um, you can always lay down something. Yeah. I don't know what spells you have prepared. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't have... 
I, I would recommend something that's concentration and can do lots of damage. The statues? Uh, the statues, by the way, kinda look like this. Relevant pictures. Alright. Uh, so, there's stone. They're made of stone, Ooh. yes. Yeah, big stone statues. Uh, I see uh, uh, Anias is having some Wi-Fi god trouble. It is still in RL's turn. It's your I know! I, I, I realize this. We will, we, we swear to all gods, as soon as the elongated rest is up, because of you and RL, we will have the, the 110 rule. <laughs> it's been, it's been over a minute. If we had the 110 rule, you would have given up your turn for a full defense action. I mean, at this, at this point, I'm thinking I might do that anyway, just cause, you know, I was not prepared for battle. Well, these are the problems that we have. Oh, also, Torner, you have one less level three slot. I, oh, yeah. That... You burned a prince alive with your flaming hands. You, you, you actually turned him to ash in your <laughs> hands in a bloody red rage. So we figured it would be entirely upcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was, I was going to say, uh... I was going to use her staff to cast a uh, bark skin on herself. <laughs> up, nice, up her a solid choice. Because, because, uh, yeah, I can, I can throw Torner his staff because she could throw okay. Torner his staff because uh, shit's hitting the fan. He's going to need it. We'll call that your item interaction. Good for you. Yeah, item interaction. Throw staff. You know, then stamp her own staff on the ground. You know, bark skin to up her AC to sixteen. Which is, in hindsight, we're surprised she hadn't used that one earlier. It could have helped her from getting the shit kicked out of her a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Uh, so, anything else? That's all she can do. Alright. Now it is the statue's turn. Each of the statues throws one giant spear at each of you. I have returned. Welcome back. We're gonna, get, we're gonna get our shit kicked in. One of the statues falls over, and its arm breaks off as it stumbles on the first one. You will see what that D100 was. We do not have to fucking tell you an Asse. I was gone as soon as it was rolled. You didn't tell us either. We didn't tell okay. anybody. We okay. don't have to tell you no, shit. It is, it is, it is a 100, yes, and, and we can't fudge that shit, so, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, okay, so, one of them, the one aiming at Inarel, is like, and its arm breaks off and it falls over. <laughs> Deferred maintenance, you know, these, these things over the course of time always break down. <laughs> yeah. So, the next one throws it called in, and simply misses and goes wide. The next one is throwing it Torner. Oh, come on. I'm gonna get okay, crit okay. on that. I'm pretty sure I'm... Oh my god. You <laughs> absolutely 100% get question. critical hit at it. Question is whatever is happening within 60 feet of me. Yes! They are 60 feet away from you, as we mentioned. One free. Also, I was not here for that mentioning. Okay. Yeah, one uh, to three you... silver barbs a day. Okay. All right. Uh, twenty-two. Ooh, geez. yeah, that's still gonna hit. Yeah, but it's not a critical, so there's that. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I might survive this. I might walk away. <laughs> it hits you for seventeen piercing damage. Jeez. As a giant stone spear slams into you. This is gonna leave a mark. <laughs> <laughs> Aldis, you are attacked for 20... 25? That hits. That hits. Okay. And you are hit for... What did we say? 13 damage. Alright. 
Yup, piercing damage as you get hit with a big stone spear. And that is their turns. Oh, no, sorry. And then they raise their shields up. Big stone shields. Now, it is Turner Firestrike's turn. Turner, you've just been hit by a 30-foot rod of stone. Yeah, that hurt. Uh, is there any way that I can get close enough to the Vizier to uh, hit him and him alone with a fucking fire? He is 200 feet away. Nobody is near him except for the king. You could create a fireball above and to one side of him to fireball only him. Yeah, you got a bubble. It's a bubble. You you could try knocking the crown off his head. <laughs> I don't know how you'd be able to do that though. Long story short, you're 200 feet away. And yes, you can make a fireball that will only hit the high priest. The range is one hundred. The range is one hundred and fifty feet. So you'd have to move at least so, fifty feet forward. Though. So you'd have to move at least fifty feet toward the fool, and you are surrounded. Oh, so you would have to accept that you might accept a couple of hits while you do that. <laughs> we could always yeah, just flee. That's what's gonna have to happen. I am gonna... Well, if you wait, if you want to wait until next turn, you have the option of using your fiery teleport. Uh, yeah, I do need to get my uh, my uh, wildfire spirit out. So I'm gonna call my wildfire spirit out, and uh, I am. God damn it! Uh. Fuck. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw a... Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna throw a... Uh, I'm, gonna drop true, I'm gonna drop a life. I'm gonna drop a life. Bar of life. Uh, 30 foot radius, life preserving energy radiates from me in an area within a 30 foot radius until the move with me, though. Each non-hostile creature in the area, including me, has resistance to necrotic damage, and its hit point maximum can't be reduced. Uh, a non-hostile living creature regains one. Oh, well, shit, that doesn't one hit point when it starts in the area. It starts in the. Okay, that doesn't do what I thought it would. So scratch aura of life. I thought that was going to be a little bit better. So instead, I'm going to use fire shield. Ooh, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna use fire shield. Nice. Boosh. All right, you can do level four spells now. Good for you. No concentration. Nice. Yup. Yup. So fire shield. Last ten minutes, so you're gonna be just fine. Okay. Of course, it's going to be the warm shield. Right. I am going to uh, also use my movement uh, and just start closing the distance. I'll take those attacks of opportunity. I'll just use my movement to start my way there. Well, as you move into the throng, uh, they don't stop you. Mm -hmm. The statues, do, or the, uh, the people don't stop me? The the Jaguar Warriors don't stop you as All you right. move forward. Alright, cool. Well, that's good to know. So, uh... This is going to be better than play, play defensively. Play defensively. Don't start smacking people around. Oh, jeez. Alright, Colin, it's your turn. Um... Uh all right. Remember, you're observant. You saw Torner pass the people unaffected. Statues, well, not I so much. I imagine. If I had to make a the guess, I think the crown. Statues are still attacking. Yeah. I was gonna say, if I had to guess, the crown might give control of the statues. Oh, I made that assumption already. I. Hmm.
Okay. You know what? I'm gonna cast invisibility on myself. Do it! <laughs> fucking do it! I was just, just thinking do it. of that! And then, uh, I was just thinking of thinking. Okay, do so, it. invisibility on myself. <laughs> It'll fall. And then I'm gonna bonus action hide and use my full movement towards the vizier. God, God. Wait, are you not blade, blade songing on your first round? Oh my God! Don't you glow <laughs> when you blade song? So that no, would suck. I, yeah. I, the fucking wall sing, but I don't glow. <laughs> okay. He's moving it. He's moving in. Oh, jeez. He's, he's gone stealth it. mode. He's doing what he's got to do. Wait, if you have, do you have to hide when you turn invisible or no? I don't, I don't remember what the ruling on that was. You, you don't. You don't in this case. You're fine. If you turn invisible, they immediately do not see you. Oh, okay. Then, then I'm going to dash. dash yeah. Since I'm going to dash. Okay. All right. So you move uh, 30 more feet toward the dude. And, uh, he's, he's just there. Black, I am the most powerful. I am the word of Rune Rock right off. You know, go, going on his evil villain monologue. Uh, so, all this, it's your turn. How many creatures can I get in a 20 foot cube? Please don't hurt people. Plenty. Without, yes, without getting us, is what I'm saying. Four. Beautiful. Then for the first time, I'm going to cast Web. Make deck saves. Okay. On the, on the creature surrounding us, or what I believe is what it is. Well, one guy, two guy, three guy, all guy are all webbed. Beautiful. And bonus action, because I want to get MD5 going, uh, you know, attack stuff. Uh, they Don't spin with people. people. Which I believe is restrained, so it has advantage. Let me double check that. So you are hurting people. The guys who haven't yet attacked you. Oh, oh, oh. I was are you, going are after you attacking... the golems who were attacking us. Okay, no, you can only get one golem. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I... no, it's... Sorry, that's... I will, okay, I will not wreck on that. I will keep the web going because it's an area of control. It's at least an area that they don't want to move into, so I will keep that. No, no, we, we'll let you say that you used it on, on the golem, because we, we misunderstood that. We'll just do one save for the golem. The golem okay. does not succeed in its deck save. They're, they're not very dexy creatures, so that's fine. Yeah, uh, that's, right. you, have yep. you have caught one golem and anchored it into, you know, the ground. Yeah, and then I will have MD5, I'll command it to attack him. Uh, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm double checking the restrained condition real fast. That's that. I have not gotten to use this before. Yeah, DC sixteen strength. While. So that is with advantage, and that's a twenty-eight crit. Oh, whoa, yeah, whoa! The MD five crit on the golem. Wait a second. You remember what this means? Oh God! Right? <gasps> oh no! Oh, well, it's, a, it's a critical success. Oh, so, oh no! Critical success. Success time on a magical effect or attack, baby. <laughs> to be One fair, moment, this can let's scroll it up. Two, two, four, nine. Okay. In the world, and that's not true. It, it, it can't only be good. You're... <laughs> it just won't be negative towards us. Hopefully. Ah. Uh... I had to say something. I just had to say something. This is... This is MD5? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um... Anase... Oh no. oh no. Calling me by my player name, this could only be bad. You do not know about this yet. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> You do not know about this yet. You're not allowed to tell anybody until it happens. Okay? Oh, no. oh my god! No, no, it, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm writing that on my character sheet. I, I don't know what it is in all, but it's gonna be great. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Okay. Well, it is not affecting this combat, so don't worry. 
Like, no, I have two of these going right now. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be great. Shy, technically, <laughs> I haven't explicitly used the first one, too. I'm still holding on to that one. Don't even remember what that one is, but you're required to remember it for us, so. Um, but yes, so MD5 uh, does hit, obviously. Uh, MD5 does hit, uh, obviously. Force, seven, force damage. So for... Oh, yeah, that's that's the... Okay, yeah, sure. Yep. Sure. And since it's my turn, I have my reaction back for the next shenanigan that happens after my turn. Um, I think I'll hold up here with everybody else. All right. The Jaguar Warrior, upon seeing everything hits the fan, immediately goes to try to attack the High Priest. And he is uh. pretty close... So he pulls out his uh, his great Makahuitl, if you will, both hands, and goes charging at him, and then enters the attack of opportunity range. Betrayer! Yeah, basically what's happening. Uh, so he enters the attack snake. of opportunity range, and then from the crown, an arc of lightning leaps out and bounces off of the dude's Makahuitl as he... Uh, Slams his Mako Weedle into the side of the throne while the high priest dodges out of the way real quick while he's sitting on it. <laughs> uh, and he's, I, I, and just, he, I, out of curiosity, what range did that lightning come out? At? 20 feet. Alright. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I, I like I'm to, just letting you know, it's 20 feet, boom, call it right now, final offer. I, I like to imagine what happened was, you know, he's bringing, the, bringing, the, bringing his weapon down, lightning came out, struck the weapon, and redirected it just ever so slightly to be dodgeable. Just ever so slightly, yeah. Got, him out, got it out of the way, and then the sword came down and shattered it's part of its blade against the throne, yeah, the golden throne. So uh, now it is um, Starwing's turn. It's Starwing's turn. Uh, she is going to... Okay, I could probably say that she was on my arm, but I'm not. I'm going to say she's starting her turn with the rest, the rest of them. Uh, That's fine. She, she is going to fly roughly upwards, and then dash uh, in the same direction as I went. So awesome, she... okay. That works, that so works. So 60 feet up and roughly above me. Okay, that her whole turn, just keeping up with everybody. Uh, does she have a bonus action that isn't defensive? Important question. It Wait, is. bonus action. Uh, what about attacking the golems with spiritual weapon? Pretty good. She needs to spend an action to summon. No, no, no. Start nope. the spiritual spirit. weapon is bonus action. That's a good. Oh. That is a good point, Nace. Thank you. Uh, she's You're going welcome. to cast spiritual weapon on the golem. Well, like, she'll just cast Spiritual Weapon, and it'll appear near the Golem, yeah. Is it, uh, does it attack right. on the same round? It, it does. Cast? Okay. Does it? Yep. Okay. So, then roll. That is good enough. It takes six force damage. Alright. Next is the Royal Guard's turn. Now, remember, you guys are surrounded by dozens and dozens of dude all in weird Jaguar things. But as the Jaguar Warrior Captain turns on the man, they basically all just start turning on the statues and fighting them, too. Ooh! There are three sides to this fight, officially now. Mm-hmm. Because some of them are standing, standing there next to you like, uh, 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 and others are running to aid the, aid the king, and others are turning on the statues, and it's all just a really, really big, horrible, messy time right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but as they turn on the statues, one of the statues just straight up is pulled to the ground. A couple <laughs> of them, a couple of them get to the king on time and start, and start picking him up off of the ground and dragging him away as quickly as they can. And in RL, it's your turn. As we have reached the end of the Havilar. Ew. Okay, uh, I have a better... Ooh, I should add that, too. Good idea. Uh... I, I, I guess, you know, she, she's just gonna prepare to dodge in case shit comes her way again, because 
she doesn't want to hurt anybody because you know she just literally saw a coup d'etat happen. So you know, and people are obviously confused and stuff. So you know, she she's didn't not gonna... literally just see a coup d'état happen. She's literally part of a coup d'état. <laughs> Another coup d'état. A three-way coup d'état. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like they could be tried to ally with the king, and then they wouldn't really have had a coup. They would have just gotten rid of the vizier. Well, they did try to ally with the king, and then the high priest slapped the king down and took his crown from him. Yeah, but if the vizier now gets killed, then the king can still ally with the people. Yeah. In strict hypothesis, yes. Yes, but that absolutely. wouldn't be a coup d'etat because he's still in power. He's still the king. It's well, we... still a coup even if you lose. <laughs> okay? I think what he's just saying is that we are not the coup d'etat in this instance. Hence you the we did, see the coup d'etat. You did, name Rune Ru- you did name Picklebeard as king. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. I was going to yeah, say, we could right. go back and be like, okay, king not a good idea. We'll make him advisor to the king because... Because that worked really well last time. True. True. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We did name him King <laughs> Fuck. That's going to be an you off name, word. In so many words, you named him the true successor to Rune Rock Rider. Well, what you could do is say that the king adopts the little boy and then you go, you have the whole king family. Uh, we'll see how that works. And Arl, it's your turn. <laughs> Things are going to complete and total shit. Yeah, like like I said, uh, wait, wait, so then I, I, so then, uh, I was, I had just come back from combat when we came in, when I came back in, so I kind of missed the situation, so we were surrounded by guards and, like, a couple golems or something. And then four giant stone, giants made of stone, giant stone statues with swords and, or with uh, spears and shields, and then you're surrounded by the King's Royal Jaguar Warriors. Gotcha. And there was a Jaguar Warrior captain up near the king, and when the high priest slapped the king to the ground, the captain turned on him, and so now all of the Jaguars are attacking the statues and going to try to rescue the king. So, when I had cast Web, it had occurred to me afterwards, I could still cast it, it, but it's just restraining people, is, you know, as in, like, everybody stops, so I just wanted to say that, because, like, that could be an option for you as well, Seth. Me. Who did we just oh. lose? Is that true? Try Alright. Yeah. So all players are still here, but yeah. Yeah, just dodge. As as as, 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 as dodging? Yes, dodging. Because you know, she doesn't want to hurt anybody. And clearly they don't want to hurt us. Well, raise your AC by four. Is that your turn? Yep. Ow. So twenty AC, please. Yes, cat. One of the statues, which is webbed, goes to, uh, what is it, 16? Uh, yes. Uh... Yes? Okay, uh, then yeah, it easily gets out. It gets out, it spends its action getting out, though. Uh, the other one, with the arm, kicks at the people attacking it, and, uh, it... I'd hurt some. Uh, one moment. 3d10. Hurts them bad. Hurts them real bad. Knocks some fools over. One, the closest one to the high priest, goes to his rescue, trying to trample through numerous, uh, groups of people and falling over while it does that. Um, crushing and killing a couple of jaguar warriors in the process. And then the last one will also try to go and do more or less the same process. Crushing and killing several Jaguar warriors in the process of tripping over them, trying to go and save the High Priest. Oh, jeez. Alright, so, Torner, it's your turn now. Everything is going completely to shit. At the very least, the Jaguar warriors are not yet attacking you. So, which quick question. Did the, uh, which way did the Vizier dodge? Did he dodge towards the king or away from him? Toward the king, yeah. But it, it, he's still in the same square. He's still in the same square or whatever. He's still the on king, the ground. The king is presently being dragged dragged away, so you, you won't have to worry about him that long. Can I close the distance this turn and go get off a fireball? You can. You can. Just Fire. know that the uh, Jaguar warrior guy is up there as well. Yeah, wouldn't that as the, the as, the, 
as the king is being dragged away, you may be uh, able to fireball the guy without hitting the captain. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Du, 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 du. You know how fireball works. We don't have to tell you to roll anything. <laughs> All right. As the fireball goes off next to the captain, or next to the priest, he uh, raises his hand up and he, he puts and throws himself to the floor and then rolls and stands back up and he's good. He's not on the throne anymore. He's he's on the square in front of it, but but he's only only moderately singed. His beard is only moderately singed. His fake beard, the fantastic thing that it is, uh, and he <laughs> takes what fourteen damage, fifteen damage. Uh, uh fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. All right, all right. So, anything else you want to do? You have a bonus action. Uh, uh, I think that is going to be all that I can do. Uh, I'm waiting for my clock. Start screaming about twenty, so I think we're gonna do anything else. Uh. Uh, uh, did anybody understand that? No. No. I don't think I can do it. Yeah, I think I'm done. I don't think I can do anything else. Awesome. Calden, your turn. Okay, so, if I recall, I am 140 feet away from the guy? Yeah, something like that. Uh, That's a shame. He's moved five feet closer, at least. Yeah, that's not Yeah, really so you're 135 help. feet, yeah. Great, that just makes the math harder. Um, <laughs> so, dashing once, dashing twice will get me 60 feet closer, it's going to be 80. Dashing a third time will get me to 50. Well, I guess I gotta dash three times. <laughs> okay, well you're <laughs> invisible, so ain't nobody seeing ya. You know, until you start... Of- until you start tracking around blood, at which point we will ask you to start doing hide. Because there's going to be a lot of that. You will, your little invisible bloody red footprints are going to start <laughs> popping up here pretty soon. I only need to move <laughs> once more. Oh, well, that's great then. Yeah. Uh, hey, all right, you're so. One of the fastest people in the party, so, you know, that's pretty good. All of us, your turn. <laughs> So then I guess I'll just keep it... Hmm. The one statue's already restrained, so I'm going to start punching the other statues around me. I want to hit them separately. The goal being to uh, you are the 60 feet, effect from the Thunder Gauntlet. You are 60 feet away from the nearest guy, remember. Oh. So yeah, sorry, I'm only be able to go after one. Losing track here. What is, what is in third feet of me? Nothing. Like, nobody anymore other than your own people. Oh. oh. The, yeah. There's still a golem restrained then, right? No, he broke out with ease. Oh, what did, what did he roll? Well, the spell save DC was 16. He rolled an 18. He broke out with... Pre- he, he's 30 fucking feet large! You think he can't make <laughs> oh, a strength God. check of 15? Or 16? Like, come on, oh. dude. I, I I forgot about ability modifier. Okay, I am a big dummy. Okay. <laughs> Alright, uh... Yeah. Then... <laughs> Sorry, uh... I'll start moving towards the the king then to tell him this is the closer. Uh, I guess that would be my turn then. Oh, uh, hello. Hi. One more. We, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. I was making sure I didn't have internet issues again. Uh. Oh. Okay. So. Um. Sorry. What were you saying? We got distracted for a moment. Uh. Well. Nothing. Nothing is around me that I guess I would need to move closer to the actions. So, uh, I guess I can attack Misty Step if Six would be enough to get to something. Preferably the golems who are under the Didn't control. Didn't you already of the use Misty Step once today? 
he did. I get a free use, and I have spell slots. Okay, that's fine. Yep. So if that will move me into something, then I'll just start punching one of the golems. No, he said it was 60 feet, and Misty Step is only 30. I can... I can... And I still have 30 foot movement. Alright. I can move, move 30 feet over the 30. So if that works, I move that, and then I will start punching. One of, one of the golems. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so move uh, thirty feet in. They are quite I'll, tied up with with the jaguar uh, 30, warriors now, of course. Uh, which ones hit? Wait, we're you moved sixty feet up to one of the the dudes. So he's he's walking thirty, misty stepping into an additional thirty, and then he's gonna. Okay. Okay. Then attack. yes. Uh, twenty two yeah. hits. That is. Yeah. Got it. Uh, for 11 more damage. 11 more damage? Got it. Excellent. Yep. That it? Yep. yep. The Jaguar Warrior Captain uh, lunges at the uh, High Priest and hits him with a critical hit. Jeez, what a what a nice. baller. Yeah, all right, buddy. Good for you. Sadly, he only does... Oh. Sadly, he only... Yeah, forget that three right there. Uh, <laughs> he only does eight damage to the guy uh, as the dude's big feathery priest robes or whatever keep the uh, Makuhito from slamming into him so hard. So, uh, Fool calls out, destroy the high, kill the high priest, protect the king at all costs, retrieve the crown. And, uh, then, uh, yeah, he didn't give a terribly good roll, but it is now <laughs> Starwing's turn. Okay, Starwing is going to use her bonus action to attack the um did did the golem that got hit by Starwing's uh spiritual weapon move? No, none of the golems have moved. Sweet. None of the statues have moved. They are completely surrounded by jaguar warriors trying to kill them. That's not true. Two of them moved toward the high priest and then fell over on a bunch of jaguars and died. But probably the one Starwing uh, is looking at did, that, did not move. Well, in that case, we're going to use her bonus action to do that. Uh, and then she is going to move and dash towards the high priest. Excellent. Great. Good stuff. Awesome. Everything else all done? Uh, yeah. She's going to be like 30 feet in front of me. And then at the end of the Havilar, the Royal Guards. The Royal Guards, uh, we, we mean they hear him and they do their best, but it's, it's just everything's scrabbled. Some are dragging the king out. Some are fighting the dudes. Some guys are bleeding and screaming for their mothers because they've had giant 30-foot tall stone statues fall on them. It's complete and total chaos all over the place. People are dying. Blood is everywhere. Uh, jeez. Oh, wow. One moment. The, they do a valiant attack on the stone statues, and it keeps the stone statues more or less in place. Um, Calden, when your next turn comes around, you, you will need to roll a hide or a stealth. Right. Or, yeah, or do use your hide action, yeah, or as a bonus action or whatever, because now there's blood everywhere. Oh, there's lots of blood. Inarl, it's your turn. Uh... Oh, uh... What? I'm, 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 I'm reading something at the moment. Uh... Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. 
so it can all be cut out in post. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah, but still. Because if you want to make allies, that's, that's, an that's an option. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking what she, what what she's gonna. Yeah, but that's also a concentration. I'd have to give up barks now. You're at forty seconds. <laughs> yes, thank you. Put pressure on me, why don't you? Make up your right. mind. <laughs> Alright, okay, gonna drop concentration on bark skin then. And cast Aura of Vitality. You know, 30, 30 foot radius healing aura. Just post it in the chat. Oop, didn't mean to roll it. And, you know, she's gonna start, you know, start. She's gonna, you know, use her movement to make her way up to, you know, uh, I guess, I guess one of the statues that's getting particularly wailed on to. Maybe provide a little little backup there. Okay, that would be the broken arm statue. Statue. Yeah. All right. So you're supporting the people who are trying to destroy the broken arm statue. Yep. Got it. Yeah. All right. You know, help, helping them do some recovery. We'll start with the broken arm statue. Yep. The broken arm statue doesn't doesn't successfully kick, and doesn't successfully kick again because he's all trying to get steady. Mm -hmm. The uh, other one, who is not trying to advance, uh, thrust his spear and misses, and then thrust his spear and misses again. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> the one first one on the ground gets back up, and then is promptly gets the crap kicked out of it by a bunch of people, and <laughs> uh, moves uh, you know a little bit. And the last one gets up quickly. And then swings its big spear around, not to effect. Jeez, that was a really bad round for the statues, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, because the statues are technically his turn, the high priest goes blah with his uh, with like lightning coming forth from his hands, and it it it, it hits the dude. It hits the dude good. Unlimited it's power. And, and the Jaguar Warrior takes 12 damage. As he goes, Arrgh! And, uh, Torner, it's your turn again. Fireball. <laughs> Fireball of the High Priest. Man knows what he wants. Oh, man. Man knows what he wants. He yeah, what can I say? And I'm gonna be clo and I'm gonna be closing the distance as well as I'm as this is happening. Like I'm running my full distance and dropping another fireball on this some bit. Caught caught in uh, a horrible situation here, being swung up by a fighter guy and now getting fireballed, dude does not make his dexterity save. It takes twenty seven damage. He's bleeding, he's burnt, he's on the ropes. <laughs> Hold it. I will or, wait, kill no, actually, you. Are, are you done? Is that it? Uh, Move bonus closer. Action. You cast a fireball. Bonus action. How close am I? Uh, how clo am I close enough to get a flame seed off? I think it's like 60. You're like 120. You're like 120 uh, I'll, at this I'll point. A moment. Uh, yeah, you're like 120 at this point. Yeah, you've got. You've still got yeah, quite a bit of distance to go. He's nope, moving through um, the ranks like uh, artillery. Yeah, I'm just still trucking with my fire spirit, just hanging out. All right, all right, called in. Wait, your turn. wait, 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 wait. Uh, he needs to take an extra two d eight damage to make up for what I forgot to call. My wildfire spirit was out when those fire spells connected. He took damage, so he takes an extra two d eight. Oh, okay, that's true. Ah, he's burning. He's burning good. All right, call it. His robes are on fire. All right, so uh, I think I said that I was like seventy-five feet away. How far? Thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. Thereabouts. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, thereabouts. Okay, so we're gonna use our movement to get to forty. As you do. Um, a nice. Each hand is thirty feet normally, right? Yes. That's a shame. 
You think I gotta? Uh, if you're planning to like pull something off of his head, there are limits on what you could do with Mage Hand. It is well more heavy than five pounds. Also, Mage Hand can do ten. Okay. Uh, but might the, be more than ten pounds. An, an ace. There's limits on what you can do. I am. All oh, right, good. Arcane Trick Master. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah, okay. So, I am going to use a bonus action to dash, and then my action to use Mage Hand. Okay. I am within range. If I'm reading this correctly, uh... I can take the crown off his head. Retrieve an object in a or carried by an ward or carried by another creature. Okay, yeah, no, that's true. You can because because you have mage hand ledger domain. <coughs> that would be a sleight of hand. We're going to say it's a sleight of hand versus his uh, perception. Say. No, because he'll feel a heavy-ass crown starting to lift off of his head. Ooh, Ooh. Right. We're sorry. As as he feels the crown lighten on his head, he, his hand comes up and puts it down. He looks straight at you as you're and his, gesturing in his general direction. Nope, sorry. That was a good try. We really like what you were going for there. Not going to work this time. You have to be a little better than that. But he, you know, it was just the rolls here, so don't worry about it. Uh, is that your turn? Uh, use my movement, my action, and my bonus action, so yeah. Awesome. All of us Ronin, it's your turn. We, we like that. We like that, by the way, Flicker. We can't we can't tell you enough. That was, that was slick. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be slick. That's nice. Uh, so, here's a... Uh, here's a question. Uh, are there any wounded around me? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know what's around the, the column I'm fighting. No, yeah, gotcha. they've like then... kicked people and fallen on them and killed a couple of them, and yeah. Gotcha. Uh, then in that case, uh, anybody who looks like they're pretty close to death, I want to cast Cure Wounds to help the guards who are wounded. Uh, oh. Alongside it all here, here, healing them. Uh, let me pull that. I'll that was try. First level. Who left? Try. try. Uh, seven hit points to the most wounded guard nearby me. Nice. Okay. Let it be known. Are you good? And then MB5. Oh, MB5 indeed. Pew pew. Yep. MB5. Pew 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 pew. pew. D27 that is indeed a pew pew. Or four force damage. A quality pew pew. Turn. All right. Quality pew pew. The Jaguar Warrior Captain, uh, he's hurting, but he he owes his life to this position, so uh, that sucks for him, and that also sucks for him. He does not make contact as he's swinging his Makahuitl at the dude. Starwing. Uh, unfortunately for the Vizier, I was not asking. <laughs> Starwing is going to go and try taking off his head. Starwing cannot make an attack roll. Would that be an attack roll? It would be. That's a shame. You're right. trying to disarm somebody, or otherwise use your attack to attack something that they've got just to grapple it off of them. So, All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just a um, quick note is that the DMG does have an optional roll for disarms, and it is an attack roll as opposed to an athletics check or anything. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, no, that we we absolutely consider trying to disarm a fool to be an attack. It's uh, or, so, or trying to or trying to in mid battle take something off somebody's head or whatever. Yeah. So, um, first off, bonus action spiritual weapon. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, let's get that out there. Is that a hit? Uh, are you hitting the golem or yeah. Yeah. no? No, it's not a hit. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, they, they're made of stone, they got a high IC. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a bonus. Uh, 
Okay, um... How far away are we starting this? From the guy? What, 60 feet? I don't know, wait, if she uh, moves in, would... No, she was like 60 feet ahead of you, so she's like right. considerably closer. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, she's, she's close. She's close enough. Okay. Uh, this is gonna be... This is gonna be risky. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Would... Would she be able to use the help action for my next attempt to take the crown off his head? Yes! Okay. Yes, absolutely. A familiar can absolutely use the help action. Well, it wasn't so much can she use the help action, it's can the help action apply to this. But okay, pretty much, en pretty much any action we figure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're, you, they can help you and give you advantage on an attack, so they can help you and give you advantage on this with the help action. Yeah, okay, definitely. Okay, so, uh, she is gonna go down and use the help action. I don't think she's gonna have enough movement to get away. Mm, well, you know. Oh, oh shit! Right. It, uh -oh. she, she's getting into a 20-foot radius of this fool, isn't she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, defensive she, lightning bolt, remember? He is entitled to a defensive lightning bolt. And that defensive lightning bolt is almost certainly going to hit her. Yep. All right. How much damage? For fortunately, it's only 2d6. She takes 9 damage. Okay. Does that um, kill her? No. She's not dead, right? No, she's got... Right, because she's got sidekick levels now. Mm. She's actually got... She's pretty chunky for a, a half-pound bird. <laughs> it is, however, a significant portion of her health. Yeah, it still would have sucked. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, mm -hmm. spiritual spiritual weapon yeah. is a um, concentration, right? No, it's right? not. Oh, okay, well, shit. Let's go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, just a uh, she you would think, then? except it's basically the cleric's multi or, um extra attack. Yeah. Okay. So she done. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Royal guard are going to. Uh... Torner, please don't. Oh, they're gonna do their crowd. best. The the royal guard are gonna do their best. Is what <laughs> they're gonna do. It's not gonna be good enough, but they're gonna do it. Uh, that's that's pretty sad. Uh, Inarl. <laughs> in it, I was gonna say, at any royal guard around Inarl, we'll get we'll get a little bit of healing because of uh, aura vitality. All right, it's your turn. All right. Uh, dang it! I had it just. Oh, there it is. Uh, this is a. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hmm. All right, she's gonna go up to one of the one of the statue to this you know the one armed statue and cast uh, thunder wave. If you cast thunder wave, you will hit other people. Oh, they're too crowded around it, huh? Everybody is crowded around them. Yeah. All right, never mind then. Uh, could um, could Inaro cast it off the top of her space and into so it's going up above their heads. Yes. Yeah, I could. I'd be fine with doing that. You know, aim, we'll aim, allow aim, it. Aim, aim, aim a little higher up to you know try to you know the logic here being hey if I can smack it in the face with a thunder wave maybe I'll knock it down. Okay. It yes, backwards. you may do that. You may do right. that. It's a Constitution save. Yep. I thought it was a strength save too, but no, it's a Constitution. Uh, it. That gets them. They they are not they are not uh Yeah, they're they, they can't resist that. That's cool. Um right. so they are pushed ten feet away. Mm-hmm. And take six and thunder damage. Take six thunder damage and land on four people who uh, are behind or it. doesn't knock it far. Aren't it look, who it. aren't looking so good. Oh jeez. No, it knocks this thing prone. We're gonna say that. We're, we're saying right. that. Right. Yeah, uh, I was prone. thinking maybe do entangle on one, but then I read it. Oh, area of effect and a strength check. Yeah, that's not gonna. 
that's not gonna work out well. And it's a concentration, so that would drop our aura of vitality anyway. Never mind. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Shy, uh, really, really quick. Is that defensive lightning? Does that count as an attack of opportunity or no? The defensive lightning happens automatically. All right. It's it's not. It, he doesn't do any of it. Okay. Um, the the crown does it as it, automatically. Yeah. Whenever anybody, any hostile individual approaches within twenty feet of him. Yeah. I was just making sure the flyby didn't fly. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh. So, Anarl, you're done. Uh, yep, that's all she can do, and oh, I should probably roll the healing for Aura Vitality, because, you know, it's a radiating around her 30 feet. It only, it's only one person per one, per turn. Okay. Wait, uh... Yeah, oh, as a, on on as a bonus action. Okay, so as a bonus action, heal someone. <laughs> okay, yeah. so both of the nearest golems do not hit, uh, and... The golem trying to get to the uh, high priest does not get to the high priest. And the golem that was trying to get to the high priest but turned around, uh, he swings around and does not hit anybody else either. <laughs> Nobody is hitting anybody today. These, these, these golems this is how just... I was feeling. This is how I was feeling uh, when I played last night with my wife, with my creature not making its fucking saving throws. I feel your pain. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Yeah, well, we mean it's like hey, it's like yeah, yeah. The the big bad guy, uh, he's swinging, he's missing, and then the you know the the warrior, he's swinging the big bad guy, he's missing, and then all of the warriors are trying to fight the statues, and they're missing, and the statues are responding in kind by attacking all the warriors, they're missing, <laughs> and we're just over here like, damn, the party really are the only people who are doing anything, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So, so this is awesome. Um, so it Torner fire strike. It's your turn since the statue's Torner, gonna tank. Please their don't fireball turns. him this turn. Uh, I can't fireball him this turn. Uh, oh, thank God. I, how how close are you to him? What? You will what? How close? How close is anyone that I might care about to this guy? Starwing is right next to him. Starwing is right next to him. Yeah. yeah. The. How expensive the, Expensive. Um, uh, 500 gold kill... expensive. I was going to say, and well, if you no, kill Starwing, no. you're going to kill Calden too? Yeah, it, Starwing is expensive enough that if Starwing suddenly dies, Calden falls on the ground and starts fishing out. Ah, okay. Um, Considering so that I happened when he died. Before. But opposite, now, yeah. He's five feet above, five feet to the side. What's his orientation? Starwing is like five feet up and to one square to the side. One square to the side. Can I squeeze a wall of thorns between Swing and the Vizier and just wrap him in a loving cocoon of thorny madness? No, absolutely not. Damn it. All right, we so mean, you can uh, if you really to want to, uh, but not without collateral damage. Okay, in that case, uh, let's do Scorching Ray. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's good, yeah. So I'm going to roll for the three rays to see what happens. Here we go. You're not upcasting Scorching Ray? I think you can't. <laughs> Uses fireballs. I know. I'm all out oh, of it. I know. Damn! Did I hit? Rough! Did I hit? 26? Yeah, yeah, you hit! I think that's 26 you hit three damage. times! Don't forget yeah. your extra Dude. 1d8. Dude! Oh, F yeah. Huh? You got an extra 1d8 on that, too. Oh, yeah, roll that. Uh, it's only I once what? per. I... It's only once per. Hold on a minute, minute. I'm reading the exact wording. Damage. Yeah, I think we had this problem last time when we had to look it up. Uh, you, whenever you. The spell, uh, you equal to the number rolled to one damage or healing roll of the spell. So you only fire once. Just the so two. The, the, the so plus two. Yeah. yeah. Right, so take so two, two just for the two extra damage to scorching ray. All right. Cool. So how much is that totally? Uh, let's see here. Holy that shit! Is... Uh, a twenty-eight damage or I think that's twenty-eight. Tw twenty-eight damage. Yeah. yeah. So this fool. This fool. Uh, okay. Okay. We're gonna roll a thing. 
you uh, burn his arm off. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. You okay. blasted him, and you and you blasted him, and he covered it with his arm, and you blasted it again, and he covered it with the same arm, and you blasted it again, and it burned his arm right off. Okay. And he screams. He screams. Ah! That good that news was is a the warning shot. shot. <laughs> good news is what, the wound will be cauterized at least. Yeah, he's not bleeding. To be fair. So is that your turn? Lightsaber in his arm. Uh, how close? I'm close to like, uh, let's see, probably like 95 feet now is where because I'm still closing the distance. So I'm close, okay, then I'm yeah, you're 95. 95 yeah, then you're 95. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm down to cantrips. I have no spell slots remaining. I have my staff and my cantrips. That's what I got. Oh, gee. Oh, nice. Yeah. Using oh, all yeah. of those player resources. Call it. It's your turn. Right, I we're gonna. Use- I used We're going to try and take that crown my... again. Yeah. Just going to try to take that damn crown off yep. his head. He's down and totally. on. He might be able to get and it. And I get advantage this time because of Starwing's help action. It's true. Nice. 22. You are better. You rip that damn crown off his head. All 8.7 pounds of it. Lovely. Uh, yep. Yeah. Heavy weighs the crown on 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 the head of of the ruler. In this case, literally. Mm. So okay. so yeah, he so, he's can... too busy holding his stump to keep that crown on his head. And as soon as the crown comes off, the statues. As soon as as soon as the crown comes off, roll the dice. Roll the goddamn dice. <laughs> Are we having a crash? Might have a little bit of a roll, slow internet thing here. It, roll twenty. Roll twenty crashed on us. Uh oh. Do you want me to roll it? Do you want me to roll? No, it we got you? it. We got it. All right. And uh, and as the thing is taken off his head, the statues start screaming and going insane. Oh no. no. That's not they good. Will head- oh my god. They will henceforth act as the confusion spell has been cast on them. Oh, what is that? I don't know. We're gonna attack right now. All right. So, uh, that was my action, I believe. Yep. Uh, I can move thirty feet towards him, which would put me at about twenty-five feet, if I remember correctly. Nice. And then and you must you must hide if you because you're you're trailing blood around now. If you want to remain hidden, you have to hide. <laughs> I'm not hiding. Oh, okay, okay. So you're just <laughs> and casting just uh, mage hand got rid of the invisibility. No, it doesn't. It does um, you're an arcane trickster? Mage hand, mage hand is casting a spell. Yeah. All right. yeah. No, it, you're an arcane trickster. Your mage hand is special. All right. It isn't it is better. It is invisible. It can pick traps, uh, pick locks and disarm traps and uh, you do not pro- you do not cancel out your invisibility when you use it. Okay. Nice. Also, we don't believe that mage hand gets rid of invisibility. Um it does. In it, my reading of invisibility it does. Uh, that's the reason why I'll post the chat. Literally, we cannot find anything other than than Arcane Trickster, because we said, does Mage Hand remove Invisibility 5e, and it literally just tells us about how you can turn your Mage Hand invisible. No, no, that's that's different. I can make Mage Hand invisible. We know that's different. It's just all we can find. There's not a single instance here... Uh, talking about in the invisibility spell. Oh wait, range ledger and... domain in combat with invisibility. Hang on. Uh, right in the invisibility spell itself, it says the spell ends for target if it if that target attacks or casts a spell. That's Mage the reason. Hand. Yeah, Mage Hand cast, is casting. Spell. So Mage Hand is a spell. It's mm. greater invisibility that ignores that. Now, if you want Aldous, to say that's a thing about Arcane Trickster, then we can move on, but... We'll allow it. 
We'll allow it. You have a yeah. special Mage Hand ability. You can use Mage Hand while invisible. All right. Uh, so. Because we're cool like that, and obviously that's rules as intended. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to use my cunning action as per okay. the... Uh, as per Mage Hand Ledger Command, I can control the cunning action. I'm going to use that to move the Mage Hand, I believe, 30 feet towards me? Its movement speed is 30. Yeah, so I'm going to move it 30 feet towards me. I'm going to use my... So, uh, take it in your hand? Oh my god, are you going to put this thing on your head? Yes. I at least stop the goal. Gonna... I'm bad at it. I am going. I am going to uh, so move Places. the rest of my movement, which will leave me with I think five or ten feet left. No, you. We thought you were like twenty five feet away, and you use your movement to get there. Fuck. All right. Yeah, you've already you used your movement at the beginning of the round, but you can. No, then... You can just bring that crown and put it on your head with the mage hand. You're absolutely a hundred percent your rights. That. You can definitely do that. You can also absolutely right away roll a charisma save. Oh boy. Oh, you are you are experiencing the same thing that Olek experienced when he took over the ship. What is it with you and with your head? Now, now, because the system is experiencing a total catastrophe, and you didn't have the force of will, the force of personality to hold it in control, you take seven psychic damage. This is you have no, you have no training with this system. You barely know what you're doing. This is not the worst outcome, I will say that. This isn't the worst outcome. You could have exploded. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and there's no amount of uh, mending a corpse that, pro that would have been able to fix that. Yeah, nobody can mend back together splatter marks on the wall. It's true. What if you use a hole instead? <laughs> <laughs> you have to have pieces to make holes. And we believe that even that has a size limit. <laughs> yeah, I just remember it was a lot All right. larger than me. I just didn't remember All right, Calden, Calden, you are wearing the crown of Mountain Home. And all this, it's your turn. Calden has just put on this fucking crown, and now he's doing the funky chicken over here like... <laughs> oh shit, I need to make uh, a concentration check. Oh yeah! yeah you yes, you do. And you have the to do. And, oh my god! No, we forgot you were in, right. So this 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 crown floats off of this dude's head. Oh no! Comes over, lowers down, and then Calden appears, going. No, technically, technically, the crown disappears, and then almost immediately after it reappears. Right? Everything reappears. Yeah. Question. Question. Oh, that, failing a con that's beautiful. No, it's failing, it's failing a, con a constitution, not, it's not okay. failing the spell itself. It, okay, do not I, I was asking it. since it was concentration on a magical effect. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to be actually writing up, like, a comprehensive, like, document on exactly what triggers it, but, but yeah, no, it's, it's good for now, you're good. Okay. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't roll a, 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 complete fail on his charisma save to use the item, you know? Right. Cause, and then that could actually, have resulted in him exploding. I actually want to ask the questions after the game about that. Just a mental note. I'm going to actually ask you. Okay. I got a couple good questions on that one. Uh, so cool beans, cool as beans. As far as my turn, all that crap is happening way too far away from me. The, the, the speedsters are doing what speedsters do. So uh, yes, last do. round, the statue that Inaro <laughs> toppled over... Uh, is there anybody stuck under, who's alive, under the... Oh, uh, yeah! Oh, people, people are screaming, their, their legs are broken under him, and they can't get out, they're freaking out, blood everywhere, oh, yeah, totally. Why does this happen every time we go out? <laughs> we couldn't tell you, man, it's like, we're only responding to I your actions. To <laughs> I am... 
reading what Throne does because I'm trying to figure out how to help them. I wanted to know if it like oh, I could build a strength save or something because I wanted to I want to shove it with my telekinetic shove off of the doors, off of the poor poor guardian uh, guards. Uh, so you have a large you can, that with my you can, you can telekinetically shove anybody, right? It's just a strength, right? Uh, double check if you. I'll double check if there's a size size restriction. Yeah, if there's the a size answer, restriction. Yes, strength, uh, saving throw. Yeah, the size restriction uh, is the only thing that we worry about. No, no size restriction. All right, that's even all right. Than I all thought. right, roll. What was it? What about? Do you have uh, uh, reduce ready? Uh, oh, what's the DC? I did not prepare it. Uh, okay. The DC is sixteen. Spell. You you shove it back. You you shove it back. Five feet off of the people, freeing a couple and, of people. And I'm also gonna go over there and heal anybody who looks uh, real battered. That was not intentional. Uh, we didn't mean to do that. Okay. Thirteen hit okay, points to anybody who's real beat up. Okay, you you cure a dude's broken leg, and he seems pretty thankful about it, actually, as you would. Uh, is that it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yep, that is my turn. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, MD5 has been commanded, so he'll keep attacking the prone guy, the prone golem with disadvantage. Uh, yeah, yeah, it works. Okay, everybody's rolling so high, I haven't been able to figure out its fucking AC. <laughs> four or four damage to the golem. Alright, alright. Okay, uh, Starwing. Uh, Oh no, sorry, Jaguar Captain. Uh, we accidentally skipped over him. Got a little, a little excited. That was Jaguar bad. Captain, uh, as he sees High Priest's arm get burned off and and the the crown lift and go over to Calden and Calden being like, blah, 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 and things are exploding and people are destroying stuff and statues are starting to freak out and and he's he's kind of not cool about this. He uh, what's he gonna do? But he's stalwart. He's on it. He has made a mission, and it's to kill this high priest right now. So that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna turn, and he's gonna he's gonna hit that guy mighty bad, actually. And the Mako Weedle goes into the guy. And, oh god! And then he goes for another swing. Cause he can do that. But it's it's sloppy and bloody, and he's you know the blood is in his eyes, and he can't really see it, and the guy is flailing, so he gets out of the way before he kills the dude. Now it's Starwing's turn. Uh, Starwing just got hit by lightning. Yeah, but uh, Colin is now in control. Well, not quite in control. He now has the crown. He now has the crown. Which <laughs> Is we wouldn't call him in control yet. Yeah. Uh. So she can. Uh. The 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 statue that was by the spiritual weapon still able yeah. to attack. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna get rid of that first. Uh. It's not prone, is it? We think there are three prone entities. So roll one v four. We'll say if it's a four, if it's a four, no, yeah, it's prone. If it's a four, he's not prone. If it's one through three, he's prone. Okay, well, the spiritual weapon is a melee attack, so that would be his advantage, right? Yep. Cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, so that's out. Next, we're gonna be dealing with action. Uh, you know what? Could Starwing help you see like come on, you can do the bleeding like telepathically. Starwing can use the help action on any skill or whatever that he's doing. Would, so yes, would, on any saver skill. Would she be able to help me with the crown? Yes, okay. she can use the okay. help action on just about anything. Yeah, I, I imagine land on, that. Land on, I gonna, imagine land on Calden's shoulder, start nuzzling his face. Some re-encouragement. Start pulling, start pulling on his ear to bring him back to reality. She's gonna do that. Alright. That is her turn. 
So that means next turn, when your turn comes around at the beginning and you make your your uh uh I save is advantage. Your your constitution save, it will be at advantage, yes. Wasn't it charisma? Um No, your fish uh okay, no, yeah, it will be charisma, right, because we'll do it at once every round. Got it. Um alright. So uh, the Royal Guard are See how ineffective they are today. <laughs> oh, the Royal Guard is starting to... Oh, okay, okay, no, we spoke a little too soon. Got it. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, you know, some Royal Guard guys are cleaning up their... their acts. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can we say? You know, it's a thing. Um, NRL, it's your turn. Alright, uh, I guess, you know, some, some aura of vitality radiation to one of the random dwarves around her. Okay. Help, help, help them recover from her mistakes. <laughs> That's the bonus action. Because, you know, with, the, with that up and concentrated on, she's got a bonus action, thankfully. And... Mm. I've, I've, got, I've got two ideas, unfortunately. <laughs> Either Thunderwave the statue... One. Huh? Pick one. You know, roll a d4 I was say, I, it's the first evens it's the second I've decided like 45 on it seconds. I was gonna say, I've decided, okay. on it. decided on it she's gonna thunder wave at the statue again you know keep that thing away from people if, if possible All right. the statue is Hold presently back, prone back. if she thunder back. waves it she will hit other people right okay uh Go to your second option. My second option was to... Actually, wait. I could just throw a produce flame at it. What am I thinking? I keep forgetting the cantrips. Do it. Disadvantage is a ranged attack roll. Just keep that in mind. Oh. So... Doesn't matter. So normal roll? Oh, right. Because... Okay, it's prone. No, no, no. I I, I get... I get... She's not. Yeah, she's not. So, it says it's prone. Okay. So, th th throw an 18. Wow, you have a plus 10 on that Produce Flame in RL? Holy crap! You can light all of the hearths in the town. Jeez, okay. Uh, Where does that yeah, plus 10 come it. from? Uh, because you're high enough level, presumably. Because uh, you have a plus... Because you have a plus 20. 3 to cast spells from your staff. And, right. And most people it, have, like, a plus 7 or whatever at this point, uh, so... Okay, so let's see. It's fifth. It's five for with the three proficiency and two from the spell attack increase. Okay, yeah, that that, yeah, that makes sense. The spell attack increase is the from the from the staff. Is the That's plus three, it, we believe. Is it? I'm well, confident it is not. I will double check. No, it no, is plus two. plus two. Okay, it's plus two. So All right, two attack and damage. All yeah, right. this would be like a legendary weapon if it was a plus three. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, long story short, yes, you produce flame. Roll your damage. Uh, eleven. Uh, produce. Ouch. Okay. Um. Uh -huh. Nice. Nice. Uh, all right. That your turn. Yep, that's my turn. The statues. Oh, sorry. The statues do nothing. Uh, uh... Don't they... No, okay, actually. Don't they yeah, roll the statues do something. Well, I was say, why don't you... They roll a d10. Yeah, they roll a d10, and that determines their behavior. Alright. One statue uses its action to make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach, so it attacks a dwarf. Being dumb right here. It does... It attacks it the dwarf, doesn't hit the dwarf. <laughs> uh, next Swing one. That was the upright one. Now we're talking about the other ones. Same thing. Uh, it'll attack a dwarf. And miss. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next. Same thing. It will attack a dwarf. <laughs> How many hits? <laughs> Wait, if it's prone, that would be with disadvantage, wouldn't it? It got up. Okay. 
All right, and it does seven damage, hurting it severely. And the last one... Oh, whoops, wrong one. And the last one will do a four. Hey, a, a, a not an eight. And it, it does not move or take any actions at all this turn. Hey. Corner five strike, it's your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, Things are starting to go crazy. Distance. A little bit more, so that brings me to, let's see, 95 minus 25 is 70. something. 70, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Nope, can't do that. So I'm, I don't think I have any spells I can use, so I'm just going to dash and close in an additional 25 feet. Going straight toward this fool. Calling yeah. over in front of you, flopping out. This dude got his arm chopped off, Sith style. Yep, pretty much, you know, and we're just gonna keep, uh, wait, uh, he's, Starwing is away from him. Is anyone else around him? The Jaguar Warrior, who's chopping him up with some fierce action? Fuck, I still can't drop a wall of thorns on him, can I? Nope, nope. you cannot. I would yeah. not be a thing right now. Get the hell out of the way! <laughs> oh, no, the warrior. And, uh, right. yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just going to dash towards him and see if I can get close enough to fucking wrap this guy in a loving cocoon of pointy madness. You're like 40 feet away now, yeah. All right, Calden. Calden, the hat is on your head. You must now roll a charisma save to try to force your will over it. And the save is at advantage. And the save Heck is yeah. at advantage, yes. You are absolutely correct, because help. Hey! Ooh, <laughs> oh, look at that! Couldn't have been I, more needed! Can I just point oh, out that it's from you that one. one and then that one? Ooh, <laughs> hey -oh. you, you The duality of the dice. Three, eight, seven, two. Because you have made a critical success! Which means that as you rest control of it, and suddenly you can feel every statue in the entire city, over 80% of them presently killing random innocents, and as you wrestle control over it, spectacular lightning heart showers all over you, grounding itself and bouncing out of the crown and hitting the ground around you. What? You feel the power! The power of 530 foot tall stone statues of death! What is the action economy of this crown? You may now use your turn to give the four statues a command. Uh, I'm going to tell Actually, them you may use your turn to give all statues a command, but obviously you can direct your most important commands at the four nearest you. Uh, I'm going to tell them all to stand down. Stand down? Are you telling all of them to stand down? Yes. Stand down! And as you do so, the shaking... Fighting stone statues in the throne room. Stop! They stand up. They drop their weapons and shields. Aldis, it's your turn. The statues have dropped their weapons and shields. The fight between the Jaguar warrior captain and the uh, high priest still goes on. Uh, what? Wow, uh, that worked for the fence. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, shouts to the, the Jaguar Warriors. Bring your wounded to me. I will, rest I will restore wounds. And he's going to keep casting cure wounds on these guys. These, these poor, these poor nice. guys. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that's my last first level spell slot. It's fine. Uh, ten more wounds to the next nearest guy. There you go, adding and, wounds uh, again. And five doesn't have to. Huh? <laughs> there you go, adding wounds again. <laughs> Cure yeah. wounds, restoring Crazy. wounds. Crazy, right. yeah, <laughs> And and five doesn't do anything. So 
the, the, the foes have stopped. That is my turn. All right, all right. The Jaguar Warrior continues the fight. He's he's determined. Uh, determined as he may be, he's also pretty inaccurate. Oh, no, no, he's coming down on this fool. And with the force of all of his strength, he comes down and he bisects the High Priest. Coming in from his shoulder, down into his chest cavity, and then ripping his obsidian-bladed Makahuitl out, showering the area in viscera and gore, showering him in the High Priest's blood as the man falls to the ground, his beard falling off of his face. <laughs> and then the Jaguar Warrior looks at you, called in, and he says, take it off now. You are not permitted to use that most holy of artifacts. The battle stops, by the way, uh, and we'll just skip to Calden's turn real quick without wasting turn order stuff. Calden. You have just been told to remove this crown that has given you the power of a small army of 30-foot-tall murder machines. If you intend to remove this crown as a player, you must roll a wisdom save. I would recommend removing the crown. Please well, everybody's do. recommending. Everybody's looking at you now. Everybody. Everybody in the room is looking at you. Ready to fight with you. You don't even they have the have option to remove the crown. You could definitely make a visible effort, at least. Well, no, no. He, he's, he has to mull it over. If he really oh. wants to give up all of this power. And, and, and oh, Calden no, no, no. hesitates. Anybody in the party... Who wants, who's there, can try to convince him here. And that might give him advantage on his next save. If you roll a DC 15 persuasion. Alright. Uh, and I... No, Guidance, that's a save. Uh -oh. No, that's a ability check's not saving throw. Hmm. <laughs> so Inaral, Inaral comes up to you, and she's all like, Hey, Calden, I know you're like totally hooked up with unlimited power and everything, but wouldn't it just be great if you didn't have all that? <laughs> <laughs> and Calden's like, Uh, no! <laughs> Calden, Calden, it's time to let it go. Put the crown down. Yo, I'm gonna Jeez. roll, then roleplay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna roll, then roleplay. Let's go. <laughs> roll and roleplay based on your roll. Oh! Oh! oh natural 20! I, All right, I do not have say what you real can... life charisma for this. <laughs> Just spit some facts. I'll... Just straight up spit some real I'll... ass facts here. Yeah. That would have... Al Aldous walks up to him. It is not in your best interest to become hostile to everybody. You have people at home. We're not here to make enemies. Take the crown off. Call them. He is right. You aren't here to make enemies. And if you were to keep that crown on your head, you would make an enemy of everybody in the city. Which means that you can uh, roll a wisdom save with advantage. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> but you have so much power, Calden! The power! All in the palm of your hands! This is extremely appropriate for Calden. Okay, right uh. Now. Power! So much power! I, was so saying, I have a question. We do what? believe we. Oh, sorry. Um. What? G given how, how bad he's doing on his uh, saving throws, if I were to do hold person on him, could someone else just remove the crown? He is a person. You could hold him. But, but, 
before he makes the decision, the last possible option here is if Starwing were to try to keep him from temptation. So we yeah. will ask, Flicker, is that in any way likely at all? Since Starwing is no longer tethered directly to his mind, she can make her own decisions, she can make her own opinions. Um... I, would she... I feel like that would actually... Oh, decision. Yeah, I feel like that's Isa. Olek isn't here. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, shit, yeah, you're yeah, right! Yeah, oh, Iset is... Okay, okay, Iset, no, no. Starwing is technically your character, yeah. roleplay-wise. Okay, so... Starwing sees the the owner wiggling. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so yes. Starwing sees the yeah. owner wiggling under the crown, being kind of crazy. Ah, uh, no. And then, and then goes dead still, and I have the power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Notice how all the people try to to get that crown off. So she decides to maybe you know. Poke him, nibble him a bit, try to, you know, shove a bit on the crown, or even you though it doesn't really make much can, difference. Because you can so directly be... speak to Calden. Yeah, yeah, she can talk to Calden. Yeah. yeah. We believe she can talk, period, yeah, she can, now, she can actually. Talk she can Colin, just speak common But now. she can yeah. speak directly into Calden's mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to, you have to take it off, pretty, pretty, please. Roll a perception. With persuasion. It, or persuasion. With advantage. Alright, Calden. This is kind of your last chance before you give in to the power of the crown. Roll a wisdom save with advantage. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my me, man. god. You got a zero. You got a zero. Alright, Calden. Alright, Calden. This is up to you to role play now. Thanks. You, 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 you've, you've, you're Anakin Skywalker right here. You're, you're, you're Frodo at the edge of Mount Doom, and Samwise Gamgee on your shoulder is all like, "Don't do it. They're gonna hurt you." And you're like, "What do you say? You, are you gonna be like the ring is mine?" <laughs> 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 all right, it's on you, Colin. Yeah, what do you I'm say? What do you think. do? I'm trying to think. You know what? I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I don't think I will. And I'm going to activate my Blade Song. OH MY GOD! <laughs> so, full oh, person now? No. Oh no! Are you gonna t are you going to give a command to the statues? Uh, what can I even command them to do? Anything that you can command anybody to do. They are yours. Defend me. Oh, that is a no. completely legitimate command. A super legitimate command. Uh, oh my uh, god. Uh, Common. I'm going to have to get off. It now, guys. guys, look at me. I'm the boss now. 